is a Rogers Sports presentation. It's a busy night at the box office at the St. Michael's College School Arena, and it's not surprising, it's Game 7 of the Eastern Conference opening round series between the Peterborough Peets and the Toronto St. Michael's Majors. Good evening, everybody. I'm Roger Lajoie, and welcome to OHL Primetime. We have Game 7 of this series between the Peterborough Peets and the Majors, and what a series this has turned out to be. It started as a bit of a rout. The Majors took a 3-1 series lead and led Game 5 3-0. But lo and behold, the Peets have come roaring back. They won that game five, six to four, won game six in Peterborough Tuesday night, four to one, and that sets the stage for this seventh and deciding game here tonight. A lot of tension in the building. It should be a great one. Game sevens usually are, and I talked to both coaches about it. The assistant coach of the majors, Bobby Jones, and the assistant coach of the Peets, Steve Smith. Well, you battled all year to keep home ice, and uh, you know we were able to win home ice advantage against Peterborough, and I think that should come into play tonight. But uh, we, with no playoff experience, we said to our players going into the game, uh, expect seven games in overtime. If that's what it takes, that's what we'll do. Absolutely. You know, going into the series, having three ties with them over the regular season, I think, in, in my mind anyway, I felt six, seven games wasn't unrealistic. But then when we went down 3-1, uh, there were a lot of people probably counted us out. But uh, credit to the boys. They just kept plugging away, and, and we're here for game seven. So maybe after game five of this series, the Peets didn't expect to be here, and maybe the Majors didn't expect to be here either, and maybe that's the problem. We are here. It's game seven, one game, winner take all in this best of seven series. The Peets and the Majors coming up with their thoughts on the game. Let's go upstairs. Here's Tim Haffey and John Walsh. Thank you, Roger. John, it's come down to game seven, and clearly these two teams are very evenly matched. They've both proved they can win on the road. Each team has won twice in the other team's rink. Talking to the two coaches prior to the game, we're hearing phrases like composure, uh, whatever team might get the breaks, uh, mental toughness. Very tough to predict this game. Either team could win clearly, evenly matched. Let's talk about the veterans because clearly veterans are going to play a big role in this game. The captain of the majors is Mark Popovic, his third year in the OHL and the biggest game he's played at this level. You're right, and Mark Popovic is the workhorse of the majors, playing approximately 40 minutes a game. But that's expected of him, and he's played well. That's okay for your average player. Mark Popovic himself has to step up his game to the point where he played in the international competition. He was at a real high at that point and that's what he has to do for the majors here. He's shown the tenacity in his own end. He won't let anybody get around that net but what he's got to do tonight is he's got to get some tenacity around the Peterborough net and put some points on the board. Majors have a solid core of veteran forwards. One of them third year, Matty Ellis. He's been with this team since day one. Since he was drafted third round in 1998, Majors are counting on a big game for Matt Ellis and his very commendable work ethic. Well, you're absolutely right, Tim. Matt Ellis has been impressive since day one. He never stops working. Tonight he's playing with uh, Frenizek Lukes and Mike Guff. Lukes, the playmaker, the finisher, and Guff is a digger. Matt has to fit somewhere between the two. He has to create opportunities for the both of them, plus he also has to finish a few off on his own. He has to get in there and just do a little bit of everything the other two are doing. The last game he was a third start tonight, he has to aspire to be number one. Pete's are counting on several veterans to get them through this game seven and into the next round and a potential second round meeting with the Belleville Bulls, their leading scorer in the series. In fact, the top scorer on either team is Brad Self, a three-year veteran, eight points through the first six games. He's a Peterborough native. He's never won a first round series. He wants this game badly. Well, every team had, has won and Brad is it. He's the energizer bunny of the Peterborough Peets. He just never stops working, he never quits. He wasn't expected to make this team three years ago. Now he's the leading uh, point getter in the playoffs because of his grit, and that's just what it is, true grit. When he goes out there, he's determined to go to that net and he won't be denied. He's making a great pitch to be one of the OAs next year. Coming off a goal and an assist in the key game six of Peterborough. And the captain of the Peterborough Peets is Matt Karkner. He's a four-year veteran. And again, the Peets have lost three straight first-round series. Karkner has never advanced beyond this first round. So a, a big game for Matt Karkner and along with all the other Peterborough veterans. Well, after refusing to sign a pro contract, Matt struggled early in the year. Once he got a sniff at the playoffs, his game picked up considerably. Now that he's in the playoffs, he's really hitting his stride and showing what he can do, making a good pitch for contract next year. He's showing a lot of control and determination on this team, 
He's silencing his early critics. His leadership and that of a few others on this team is, what, is what's putting us into Game 7 here tonight. Okay, so it's all come down to one game between the Pete's and the Majors. Let's send it back to Roger Lajoie. Well, thanks very much, Tim and John. And indeed, it has come down to one game. The Majors did not want this Game 7. As I said earlier, they had a stranglehold lead on this series. 3-1 to one in games and 3 nothing in Game 5. But the Pete's clawed back in that one, tied it up at three after two periods of play, got the go-ahead goal early in the third, and won game five, six to four. Game six in Peterborough, the Pete's were dominated. They were outshot 35-24, as they have been in most games of this series, but they found a way to win four to one to set the stage for this seventh game. Now, whoever wins this game seven will not have much time to sit around and rejoice. If it's the majors, they catch a bus tomorrow morning. They're in Sudbury Friday night for game one of that best of seven OHL quarterfinal. If it's the Peterborough Peets, they'll go to Belleville on Saturday and waiting at home tonight to see who wins this. And we welcome the viewers in Ottawa. I'm sure a lot of 67s watching tonight because they may be headed to Sudbury Friday or they may be headed to Belleville on Saturday. How will it all unfold? We'll find out depending on who wins this game seven. It's the Peets in the Majors game seven from St. Michael's College School Arena for the call of game. Let's go back upstairs. Once again, Tim Haffey and John Walsh. strong and free from far and wide oh Canada we stand on guard for thee God keep our land glorious and free oh Canada we stand on guard for Game seven between the Peterborough Peets and the Toronto St. Michael's Majors. Joey McDonald has gone all the way for the Peets in this first round series, making his seven straight start. Sports a 2.50 goals against average, which is fifth in the OHL playoffs. The 9.33 save percentage is ranked number four. Joey McDonald, the fourth year overage, playing uh, possibly his final OHL game from Picto, Nova Scotia. At the other end, a 17-year-old, the rookie Andy Kyoto, making his third playoff start for the Majors, his second straight. He's 0 for 2, 3.50 goals against average, and 877 save percentage. Ranked number six by NHL Central Scouting for the upcoming NHL draft at four shutouts during the regular season. One of the top rookie goalies in the OHLs. We're underway here at St. Mike's Arena. The Majors send it deep into Peterborough territory. Brad Beers, the referee, Sean McQuig, and Ian Smith are the linesmen. Majors opening with Mike Goff, Matt Ellis, and Frank Lucas up front. There's Ellis with a shot wide as McDonald clears it into the corner. Fata and Cook, the starting defense for the Majors as Lucas lets it go, and McDonald took it high. John House, Jamie Chamberlain, and John Brio, the starting forward line for the Peets, so Lucas Krychek, and Matt Karkner on the defense, and of significance, Lucas Krychek is suited up and playing for the Peets here in this Game 7. There was speculation prior to the start of these playoffs that he might be off to the Czech under-18 team, but the Peets have managed to hang on to him for this crucial Game 7. Mike Goff's shot is blocked as he bumps with Dustin Wood. Both teams changing it up. Foster's pass behind Eric Stahl. Al Klein moves it ahead. Kevin Klein, the underage rookie at plus four, the Majors leading plus minus player in these playoffs. Brad Self's drop pass intercepted. Lindsey Plunkett clears it to the line. Now wrist shot knocked down, and the Majors' Timmy Brent will chase it into Peterborough territory. Brent kicks it ahead for Lindsey Plunkett. Plunkett centering, but Brad Self there to intercept. Pete's leading playoff score. Self busting it down the right wing. He finds Rodman. The Pete's with the number one line of Self, Stahl, and Rodman as those three peel off to the bench. Mark Popovic leads the rush, fires it deep. Popovic will go for the line change. Armstrong for Matt Elzinga. Pete's have relied on five defensemen throughout this series. Ryan Card, the underage rookie, has been the odd man out. 
Noisy crowd here at St. Mike's Arena, as you might expect. The Peets with the momentum coming in. They've won two in a row, two must-win games to force this game seven as we have our first whistle, 1-56, into this hockey game. Well, if territorial advantage is anything, Tim, St. Mike's has had the advantage for the most part of this first period. The ice is barely touched at St. Mike's end. Majors have not changed their lineup for seven games. Mike Sellen on the defense, and Ryan Robert, the extra forward, are tonight's scratches. Pete's have a healthy lineup as well. Pete's control the draw. Here's Dustin Wood working with Curtis Foster. Messina intercepts. And the pass for Bannon on the right wing. He'll take it wide on Wood. Centering pass intercepted by Jimmy Gagnon. Down the right wing. Greg Chambers takes a hit from Chris Boucher at the blue line. And Reynolds plows into his man. Hernandez into the corner. Good physical play here in game seven. Majors busted out to center. Matt Bacon winds up and the shot deflects high and over the glass with Dustin Wood getting a stick on it. Peterborough, the 24-man roster for these playoffs. Regulars Dan Buccella and Kerry Gillis have been scratched along with the two call-up players, Josh Patterson from the Lindsay Muskies, who has seen action in this series. And Mike Self has been the seventh defenseman in waiting, the call-up from the Peterborough Bees. Junior A, he has yet to see any action in this series. That would appear to be the Peterborough Pete's taxi squad. Majors Ryan Walsh wins the draw. Back for Drew Fata. Fata for Tyler Cook. No score. Long lead pass. Carries into Peterborough territory. Crycheck will touch and the Majors called on the icing. Well, we have a little bit of a surprise here tonight. Coach Cameron and Jones deciding to go with Andy Kyoto in net. Um, Andy was play, played in Peterborough on Tuesday night and, you know, was uh, the victim of the loss. And, but although he, the team lost, coaching staff said that he played very well and earned the right to play tonight. Well, just retracing the goaltending history for the majors in this series, Kyoto started game one, lost 4-1 to one with an empty net goal. The switch was made to Peter Budai for game two. He won three straight. Maybe a couple of questionable goals in game five where the Peets rallied from a 3-0 second period deficit to win at 6-4. Major switching back to Kyoto for game six. Again on the wrong end of a 4-1 score with an empty net goal. But Dave Cameron electing it to continue with Kyoto making his second straight start this, uh, this evening. Ryan Walsh for Adam Deleuze. So Peter Budai on hand is the backup. David Curry, the 18-year-old second-year player, a Peterborough native, is the backup to Joey McDonald, and Curry has not seen one second of action in this series. Daryl Boodlin chops it into Peterborough territory. Joey McDonald has been very steady for the Peets. I don't believe he has let in even a questionable goal in this series, John. No, never I don't mind, think never so. Never mind Tim. a bad goal. He was the key to the puzzle that the Majors had to solve. And it looked like they had on uh, Sunday, but Pete's came back and eventually won the game. Matty Ellis putting the backhand into the crease with Mike Goff upending the net after the fact. Well, one of the things the majors have to do is they have to get to that net to be successful. They have to get in Joey McDonald's face and get the puck behind him. Brad Beers supervising things, Sean McQuig and Ian Smith. Face-off coming up in the Peterborough zone, 16-19 to go in the first period. Pete's coming off the 4-1 win Tuesday night in Peterborough with the empty net goal to force this game seven. The Pete's again have lost three consecutive first-round series. Majors making their first playoff appearance in four years. And Popovic off the draw, dangerous wrist shot, and McDonald had to stretch to make the save. Lucas checked by Eric Stahl, the top two rookie scorers in this series. Stahl and Lucas. McDonald will leave it for Karkner. Karkner sends it off the boards. Kevin Klein and Brad Self in a race, and the Peets will be called for the icing. And Kevin Klein with that plus four, John, really a, a coming of age series with Kevin Klein. We saw him come to Mark Popovic's defense early in the series, taking on Matt Armstrong of the Peets and leading the majors in plus minus as an underage. 
Well, when you look at how much ice time that Mark Popovic is, Popovic is getting on his merit, you know, it's a big plus for Kevin Klein, his partner. I mean, he's getting a lot of that ice time too. That shows a great amount of confidence that the coaching staff has in his young fellow. Turned 16 in December, the Major's second round pick out of the Kitchener Midgets last year. One of two blue chip underages drafted by yep. Mark Osborne as the Major score. Chris Boucher from the left point. Beating Joey McDonald low to the glove side. May have caught something in the way there. John, a relatively harmless looking shot. But nevertheless, the Majors open the scoring at the 4-11 mark of this first period. Well, it's not the type of goal you'd expect to go by Joey McDonald. Chris Boucher lets go of just a harmless little shot from the point. As you can see, I mean, there's no problem seeing the puck here. Maybe it touched Ryan Walsh that dropped a little bit, looked a little high. What, nonetheless, Joey McDonald just seemed to have his hands tied. The puck went in the far corner for the first Majors goal. Shots on goal are 4-0 in favor of the Majors. Andy Kyoto has not been tested. Ryan Walsh has been given credit for the go-ahead goal at 4-11. Chris Boucher drawing the assist. And for Walsh, his second goal of the playoffs. Bound along the boards in front of a Peterborough bench as Lauren Macedo will wrist it into Peterborough territory. Here's Dustin Wood. Steers it away from Popovic. Macedo up in the forecheck as well. Now Armstrong looking for Daniel, but stepping up was Drew Fada. Matty Bannon takes the bump from Daniel. Now both teams in this series have shown an ability to come back. The Peach most notably in game five, down 3-0 in the second period. Majors led 1-0 in game six in Peterborough as well. Back into St. Mike's territory. Fada will touch. 14-37 to go in the first period. Well, the Majors have come out here with a lot of energy right off the bat with Matty Ellis and uh, Guff and Lucas just hold, holding the uh, Peterborough Peets in his zone and they just haven't let up. Again, we're looking at uh, Chris Boucher doing what defensemen should do. Get the puck to the net. Around the net, we're looking at Lindsey Plunkett, we're looking at Ryan Walsh, and as we see the, the trajectory of the puck, it just takes a drop. McDonald has a line on it, but once it drops, it goes in the corner. Off the draw, puck into the corner as Walsh bumps with the other overage, John Brio. This game of serious significance to the six overage players in the game, all potentially playing their last OHL game. Adam Ballou for Daryl Boudlin. Here's Boudlin setting up the wrist shot and knocked down by McDonald. The two former Barry Colts, Boudlin and Ballou combining. Here's Fata off the boards. Bouncing puck for Mark Karkner. Now for Krychek. Lead pass for Brio. All three Peterborough overage is on the ice. McDonald, the goalie, John Brio up front, and Kartner on the defense. Brio and Kartner, both four year veterans of this team. McDonald in his third year in the Peterborough cage, having started his CHL career with the Halifax Mooseheads. Pete's player up ended behind the play. Pete Crowd wants a penalty. They won't get it as Popovic feeds it ahead for Frank Lucas. Ahead for Mike Goff, 2 on one fakes, now shoots, and McDonald gathers it in. Ellis uses the decoy on the play. Well played by Dustin Wood. Mike Goff wanted to use, wanted actually to dish it off to Matt Ellis, but Wood wouldn't let him. He kept holding him, holding him. Wood just staying between. Mike's a little uh, tentative on a shot, as you see here. There's no question he wants to get it off to Ellis, who's wide open in front of the net. Great play by Dustin Wood. Dustin Wood did his job. He took away the pass and left Joey McDonald to contend with Mike Goff. Mike Goff scoring the Major's only goal in game one, significantly the, the first goal in the modern Major's playoff history. 13-31 to go, 1-0. The Major's lead on the goal by Ryan Walsh and Brentford Popovic off the draw. And McDonald, a smart-looking save. Well, again, a good defense, but gets the puck to the net, gets it low. 
Joe McDonald opened up a rebound there with Lizzie Plunkett sliding through. But I think it was Matt Cardner had a grip on him and wouldn't let him get that shot off. Hello to all our fans, uh, all the hockey fans, OHL fans, uh, not necessarily our fans, Sean, but OHL hockey fans are watching in Ottawa for this evening's game. And, of course, this game seven between the Peets and the Majors has implications for the Ottawa 67s in the second round. Derek Stahl takes it over the blue line. Now Brad South, the backhand. Another chance, and Kyoto finally tasted, uh, tested. He's scrambling for that loose puck, and finally the Majors clear it away. Shot right back by Elzinga. Majors clear it to the sideboards, and Plunkett will relieve the pressure and skate it out to center. If the Majors win, the Ottawa 67s will be seated fourth and play the number one Belleville Bulls. If the Peets pull it off, the 67s will get the third seed and play the Sudbury Wolves in the second round. And we have our first penalty of a hockey game. Warren the seat up ended in the slot area. Well, you're looking at Steve Farkas, and he's a guy, he's a bit of an energizer bunny himself. Got out here, got the opportunity to get on this line, and next thing you know, he's buzzing all around the Peterborough net, looking for that opportunity. What happens? Matt Karkner has to pull him down. Well, Matt Karkner, the leader of the Peets, also leads all players in penalty minutes in this series with 23 coming in. Well, actually, I'm, I'm a little mistaken. Karkner didn't pull down Farkasen, but nonetheless, he's going to the box. I believe for cross-checking, Tim. Well, he took out Lauren Mesita pretty convincingly. And when you consider Karkner has been doing this thing, uh, sort of thing for seven games now, his beats rely on him and Curtis Foster and the other big bodies in that blue line to clear the front of the net area. Inevitably, he will take a share of penalties. That's cool. Let's go up and draw a block and chasing the rebound. And McDonald will cover up. And again, that sequence underscoring the importance of winning a faceoff especially on the power play. Well, Majors, again, Majors, sorry, John Majors' power play, I was just going to say, is ranked number nine in the playoffs, 17.2%. Beats penalty killing is ranked number eight at 82.8. .8. Again, a nice low shot, opening up a little bit of a rebound about Joe McDonald, but nonetheless, he was able to smother it. Beats win that draw conventionally as Dustin Wood fires it down the ice, 149 to go on the power play. Kevin Klein and Lucas will work the points for the Majors. Brent Plunkett and Brooklyn up front. Rio and Chamberlain, Wood and Foster on the penalty kill as the Majors count on the offside. Well, we've gone through the lines a couple of times here tonight. We're looking at the St. Michael's Majors. The lines that are really producing for them are the younger players. What they've really got to get something out of tonight is the line of Bootland, Walsh, and DeLue. Get those guys going. we got a real good chance of winning this game. If not, yeah, it's real questionable. Dave Cameron, first-year head coach of the Majors. Club record 80 points and 35 wins this year. Majors finishing 12 games above 500. Beats with 70 points over the regular season. Majors won the season series, 1-0-3. Fill that out, of course. All that matters is the 3-3 series result coming into this game seven. Popovic will take it over the line. Popovic's shot is wide. Here's a Lucas. Rio nearly forced it out. Now Brooklyn's side of the net. Timmy Brent will take it back of the net. Working with Lindsey Plunkett. Chamberlain takes a run at Plunkett. And the puck pushed out over the blue line by Jamie Chamberlain. He'll head to the bench. 55 seconds ago on a power play. Here's Lucas. Gains the line. Sends it side of the net. McDonald applies the stick. Lucas unable to keep it in as working up top is Brad Self. Lucas for Popovic. Return for Lucas for Popovic. Ahead for Ryan Walsh. Down the off wing. Tries to cut it to the middle. Held up and again the Peach force it out. Brad Self getting a stick on it. Harold Bootland will take over. Self intercepts it along. Peets continue to frustrate the Majors. 22 seconds to go on the penalty. Ryan Walsh. They'll fire it far corner. And Matty Ellis steps up. Ellis and Bannon trying to establish possession. Ellis pokes it back in the net. Wood will pound it off the boards and all the way out. Six seconds to go on the penalty. 
Yoto well out of the net as Matt Kuttner emerges from the penalty box. One nothing the score. The Majors leading on the goal by Ryan Walsh. Matty Armstrong intercepting the outlet pass. Now the Majors clear it to the line and out. Krychek takes the pass from Wood. Back for Dustin Wood. Third year veteran, former Wexford Raider Jr. Wood will set up shot behind Joey McDonald. Approaching the midway point of the first period. Ahead for Matt Armstrong. Kevin Klein will break it up. Fire deep off the end glass. Dustin Wood again. Steers it away from Bacon, looking for room. Off the boards, pass doesn't work. Now Boucher for Reynolds. Armstrong had a read on that pass. Lorne Mesita curling back into his own zone. Ahead for Matt Bacon. He bumps it, Matty Armstrong. As Bacon had to come back to take that pass. Bacon will follow up along the boards. Mesita stepping into Marcel Rodman for Armstrong. Now Goff breaks it up. And Elzinga fires it into St. Mike's territory. Reynolds can't quite connect to Matty Bacon. Now he'll take it in. Bump from Armstrong. Puck on in. Out in the neutral territory. Back for Adam Elzinga. 18-year-old rookie out of Danville Junior A stateside. Adam Elzinga. One of two blue chip rookies for the this year. Along with the import. Lucas Krychek on that blue line. Here's Stephen Hoy. Joey McDonald takes the long shoot in and he'll gather it in. Well, Tim, that was quite a period of hockey there that we had. Going back to the um, power play situation, the Majors had the puck for the majority of the time, but Peterborough kept them on their heels. They prevented them from getting set up or allowing them to do anything, and much of that time was spent trying to set up in the neutral zone. Good job on Peterborough's part of penalty kill. Penalty coming up against the Majors, Chris Boucher will get the gate at 11.05. Pete's power play has struggled. It's only two for 30, 6.7%. That's 15th among the 16 playoff teams. Majors penalty killing, as you might expect, ranked very high, 93.3%. Ranked second among OHL playoff teams, the Windsor Spitfires, at 96.4%, ranked number one. Now looking around, Tim, I don't know if they can pack another person into this place. This place is jam-packed. People sitting in stairs, three or four deep in standing room. Great atmosphere for a hockey game. Well, this is clearly, uh, I think we're up to majors looking at roughly their eighth consecutive sellout in this building, regular season and playoffs combined. And they appear to push the envelope with this crowd. This is maximum capacity. Here's Foster, cross ice for Krychek. Now for Foster, in for Brad Sell. Pete's on the power play. Krychek, Foster, one timing it knocked down in front by Pavlovic. And the captain of the majors will pound it off the boards and out. 1.24 to go in the penalty. Foster will lead the rush. Second round draft pick of the Calgary Flames. Fires it deep. Fata tries to chop it out. Now Krychek at the point. Here's Foster, the return for Krychek. Finds his man, side of an end, wrist shot by Eric Stahl, a 16-year-old rookie in the majors, will clear the zone. Some of the young rookies have played very well in this series. John Eric Stahl of note for the Peterborough Peets. And the majors, two underages, Tim Grant and Kevin Klein. Klein is going to discuss the leading in the plus-minus department. And Timmy Brent, third in scoring for the majors in these playoffs with five points in six games. Well, one of the players that you failed to mention on the score sheet, but has really been an impact player here in the playoffs, is Drew Fatt at number nine. One of the defensemen for the Majors. He's playing some great hockey, and the future looks awful bright for the Majors organization with the young fellows like Drew Fatta, Tim Brandt, Kevin Klein. Let's get a look at Matty Bannon on the left there, number 33. Going to the seat also in that picture. Ryan Walsh will take the draw, 53 seconds to go in the penalty to Boucher. Walsh and Gagnon on the draw, the former Kitchener Ranger. Jimmy Gagnon wins it, the Peets will start the rush. Jimmy Gagnon, one of three players the Peets added to the roster in midseason. Gagnon Armstrong coming over from the Kitchener Rangers and Billy Zalaba from the outside attack. Mike Parkner picks his way to center, he'll fire it deep. 
Armstrong and Gagnon, the two former Rangers working in his power play. Here's Gagnon trying to force the face off. He will get it. And now Gagnon is underneath the major player. Well, what I find very interesting, Tim, is Jimmy Gagnon, with, I get the impression the real reason for the trade was his feistiness, not his real finesse with a hockey stick. But what we're seeing here is he, him being in almost all important situations that the Peterborough Pizza put in. He's on the power play, penalty kill, playing regular shift. Real asset for Coach Rick Elaine. Matty Armstrong's had a very strong series for the Peets. Three goals, one assist, four points. Darrell Boudlin leading the majors in goal scoring during the regular season. A career high for him with 32. Possibly playing his last OHL game. Could very well land a pro contract at the Colorado Avalanche next year. Younger brother Nick, older brother Nick rather, former Guelph Storm player. Playing for the Hershey Bears this year in the Colorado system. Well, Darrell Boulin's presently going to be sitting in a penalty box for hooking, which is going to put the majors down two men for about 25 seconds. Five on three. Here's Brad Self. Return pass for Foster for Self again in for Krychek. Krychek threads it across for Foster. He'll hold up. Self thought about shooting. Now Foster for Krychek. Sharp angle shot and gathered in by Andy Kyoto. As the first penalty to Chris Boucher has expired. So the Peterborough Peets at a short 25 second two man advantage. Well, when you look at the patience that the Peterborough Peets are showing here. Foster to sell, Foster to sell, Foster to sell. Finally getting over to Krychek on the uh, right side there. Who unloads a shot at Andy Kyoto, just catches him high in the body, and Andy's just able to smother it up. 135 remaining in the Bootland penalty. Peach now show 0 for 1 in the power play as Klein check with a shot, score! They've got 1 for 2 as the Peets have tied this game on the power play. Lucas Krychek climbing the net from the point. Final of that goal, 18-10. Well, that appeared to be another one of those shots. It's just kind of floating. Not a real hover there. Rodman gets a stick on it, deflects it past Andy Kyoto. Again, not a very hard shot from the point. Krychek just coming across. His possession of the puck slides along the blue line. He sees two Peterborough Peets. All set up in front of the net. Their sticks free. Ready to deflect the puck. Only the Peets' third power play goal of the series. Their regular season leading score. Marcel Rodman connecting for his fourth goal of the playoffs. Chamberlain will cut it to the middle, gets the shot off, and Kyoto will cover up as Chambers takes a shot from Mark Popovic behind the play, and Mark Goff comes over to intervene on uh, Popovic's behalf. Oh, nice little play by Lucas Krychek. He sees two Peets in front. We don't see it really from that angle, but they're in tandem. Either one of them could do it. Whoever the first Pete is, I think it's Self, just leaves it. Rodman just gets a stick on it. Nice little soft deflection. But just enough change of direction to go by Andy Kyoto. Face off to the right of Andy Kyoto, and here's Karkner putting it on goal, and Kyoto will hang on to that shot. Let's go ringside to Roger Lajoie. Well, guys, it'll be a tale of two media coming up during our first intermission today. Sunyaya Sapurji of the Toronto Star will join us, and from Waymore Sports 
Peterborough.com, covers the OHL in Toronto. And Terry Doyle of Chucks TV in Durham has covered the Peterborough Pizza all year. There'll be our two guests coming up in the first intermission of this barn burner tonight at St. Mike's. Let's go back upstairs. Well, There's Tim, it looked like it was going to be all St. Mike's majors. They had 12 shots, and Peterborough barely had one, and it was a soft one at that. Next thing you know, Peterborough starts to really put on a little bit of pressure with the help of a couple of penalties, and now the shots are uh, getting a little closer. 12 for the majors and 8 for the Peets. Kyoto gloving down that shot from Matt Karkner. Rick Allen, the head coach of the Peets, and to his left, the assistant coach, Steve Smith. Rick Allen in his third year behind the Peterborough bench. He's sitting there looking pretty confident, isn't he, Tim? It's been a tough series for the Peets. It looked like they were done in game five, down 3-0 in the second period. But they caught some breaks. They applied that famous Peterborough work ethic. Not only forced game six, but also this game seven. Here's Timmy Brent trying to freeze it in front of the Pete's bench. Down goes Ryan Walsh. Now Walsh and his knees trying to send it back to Reynolds. Intercepting on the play was Hernizen as Reynolds knocks over Hernizen. Majors with the two big bodies in the blue line. Reynolds and Boucher, a couple of third-year, 19-year-old veterans. As Kyoto will take no chances. And again, the rough stuff in front of the Majors net. Boucher and Reynolds aggressively defending their territory. Well, something has to be done, Tim. In the first goal, first Peterborough goal, the two men were let allowed to set free in front of the net, just roll them a little bit. Rodman got a stick on it, was able to deflect it by Andy Kyoto. Relatively harmless shot without that deflection. Talking about Dustin Wood being a product of the Wexford Raider Junior A system. Same goes for Andy Kyoto. Graduating from the Raiders to the Majors this year. Majors second round pick in the Bantam draft in 99. So if the Majors win tonight, John, they will open in Sudbury tomorrow night. If the Peets win, so we heard from Roger in the pregame, they will open in Belleville. So either way, we'll have a division rivalry in the second round involving one of these two teams. Belleville Bulls sweeping the Kingston Front Knocks in four straight. The Wolves needed five games to dispatch the Barry Colts. Ottawa advancing over North Bay. Beats win the draw, but Masita recovers. He'll kick it over the line. Working on Curtis Foster as Bannon steps into Carpenter of the blue line. 5-32 remaining in the first period. Score tied, 1-1. Ryan Walsh for the Majors and Marcel Rodman on the power play. Well, Tim, this game has settled down a little bit, as I say it earlier. The edge really went to St. Mike's in terms of the territory, but Peterborough started coming on. Looked like they might have been uh, blown out of the barn real early. 12-8 shots on goal in favor of the Majors. Here's Dustin Wood under pressure from Matty Bannon. Manages to get it out. Bannon steals it. Now Bacon at the line. Shot the flex just wide as Bannon got a stick on it. Now Dustin Wood does clear it out. Battle in the neutral zone. Chamberlain comes up with it. He'll try and cut it to the middle. Battle working on Chamberlain. The Majors rookie knocks him down. Now Tyler Cook and John House. Several players fighting for possession. The corner of the overage. Brielle comes up with it, but Bannon knocks him over. Now Fata has his man pinned up against the board. Bannon continues to work over Brielle. And Tyler Cook will skate away with a loose puck ahead for Matt Bacon. Bacon takes it wide on Dustin Wood. Shot hits the side of the head and Krychek there to gobble it up. Here's Eric Stahl. Checked out the puck by Masita. Wood gets it back for Brad Self. For Stahl. Pass behind Rodman. Now Lauren Masita will take over. Self nearly intercepted. That pass well behind Mike Goff. Krychek steps into the shot. But the Majors check rookie Lucas catching up with him. 
Klein at the point. Wrist shot, knocked down by McDonald. Ellis will pound it by Goff, looking for the redirect. Back to center it comes. Kevin Klein will retreat. Eric Stahl up in the forecheck. Here's Matty Ellis. Working with Goff and Lucas. Ellis, the wrist shot, knocked down in front. McDonald clearing away the rebound from Frankie Lucas. And now a howl for the Peterborough Beach fans as Lucas appears to have been caught for high sticking. Yep, that's going to be the call, Tim. Two minutes for high sticking. Well, he's going to the St. Mike's players bench for some reason. Well, it's not. It isn't Frankie Lucas. It's Kevin Klein that was called. Well, both of them are the relative same. Mary Klein just trying to bat the stick. Uh, sorry, the puck down. Got a stick a little high, and I believe he caught Brad Self there. Pete's will get their third power play of the game, and yes, a very well, I obvious guess he wasn't gonna high stick. Trying to knock the, the puck down. And you see Lucas taking a chop after the fact. Chop of the ice, mind you. Pete's are one for two in the power play. Marcel Rodman connecting for their third power play goal of the series. Eric Stahl and Matty Armstrong have the other two Peterborough extra man markers. 3.36 to go in the first period. Well, we're looking at the voice of the St. Mike's cheering section, I guess you could say. Paul Mariani, hockey player in his own right, won a couple of championships with the junior hockey team at St. Michael's. Throwing the quips at the penalty box. And a former Peterborough Pete, Ty Domi, achieving notoriety for his water squirting annex in a penalty box in Philadelphia. Matty Ellis up on the penalty kill, put the back end up, the crossbar. But several Pete's in this series have been squirting the vocal major fans behind the penalty box as Wood sends it over for Karkner for Wood again. Here's Armstrong, back for Wood, fakes. Now Armstrong again finds Karkner for Wood. Again for Armstrong. Majors keeping the peach wide. Armstrong all the way over to Karkner. Skip Wood that time. Oh, Wood lets it go. It's wide off the end boards. Greg Chambers for Dustin Wood. He'll pound it on goal. Kyoto making a big save on Dustin Wood. Great pressure put on by the Peterborough Peets. Good, patient passing on the power play. Not getting frazzled. You know, they've got a lot of the majors running around like spinning tops. The, the way they're handling the puck in the major zone there. Matt Ellis just had an opportunity to take a lot of the wind out of the Peterborough Pete sail. Came in on Matt, uh, Joey McDonald. Just lifted the puck with a backhand. Caught the, the, the bisect of the crossbar at the post. A little bit of an opening. The puck just deflected away. Here we see the action in front of the majors net. It's starting to heat up a bit, Tim. Good game seven playoff battle going on there between Matty Armstrong and the major defender. Those battles are key in a winner take all game like this. I would suggest the more battles you win, the more likely you are to win the game, John. Well, as I always said in sport, it's the little battles that they all add up to the, the big win. You have to win the battles before you can win the war. Here's Matt Bannon. All right, we will dispense with the cliches as Foster sends it around for cry check. How about uh, in the battle of life, Tim? It's not the critic that counts, the old Lombardiism. Now Foster. Across for cry check for Stahl. Gains the line. Pete's still in the power play here for another 25 seconds. Fata can't get it out. Peach looking to establish possession. They have that top line of Self, Rodman, and Stahl working up front. Krychek at the point for Foster. Here's Krychek again for Rodman. Back for Krychek. The Peach A power play unit. Foster, Krychek will shoot, score! The Peterborough Peach power play connecting again just one second ago on the penalty as the Peach go ahead 2-1. Well, it's the same scenario that we talked about with the first Crytek shot. 
He just, this time it's got a little more velocity on it, but the puck's going nice and low towards the net, and all of a sudden hits something, deflects up. Is the Peterborough Pete, is the major in front of the net. Kind of looks like who we got in front of the net here. Uh, Brad Self. Well, Brad Self may get credit for that goal, and if he does, Krychek and Foster will get the assist. Time of the goal, 18-23. The Peach two for three on the power play. And right off the draw, Daryl Boomer goes down. Looked like he caught a stick from Matt Hernizen. Self from Krychek and Foster, and the Majors will go on the power play. As right off the faceoff, Daryl Boomer appeared to have appeared to catch a stick, and Matt Hernizen will get the game. Well, going back to the goal, that was Brad Self's sixth goal of the playoffs. You know, as we talked about before, here's a young fellow a couple years ago was questionable whether he's going to make this team. Now he's showing a lot of tenacity in the playoffs. You know, talking about that tenacity and grit, we saw him hanging in there in front of the net. Major all over him, still is able to deflect the puck. The Brad Self leading the Peets in scoring in these playoffs is sixth goal in seven games. Eight points coming into this game seven. 11th in OHL playoff scoring. Major's leading scorer is the Lindsay native, Lindsay Plunkett. With four goals and seven points in six games. High sticking the time of the penalty. The call of the penalty at the time is 18.37. On Matt Hernizen, Major's 0 for 1 on the power play. And trailing 2-1. Peets coming back from a one nothing deficit. So the Peets again showing their ability to come back. Less than a minute to go in the first period. Lucas will bring it back over the line, but the Majors called on the offside. Well, a lot of the Majors were coming out of the uh, Peterborough net, uh, zone, I should say. But Frankie Lucas trying to get across the blue line forgot one thing, the puck. Put himself offside there. Frankie Lucas ranked Number 112 for the NHL draft. Major's second leading playoff score with six points coming in. Ryan Walsh will take the draw back for Popovic. John Brio sends it into St. Mike's territory. We talked about Lindsey Plunkett. Wearing number 11 on his power play unit is Walsh up ending in front of the net by Dustin Wood. Here's Walsh into the corner, Plunkett back of the net now for Frankie Lukas. Plunkett the only player in this game that has won an OHL playoff series. Plunkett made three playoff appearances with the Guelph Storm, including a championship team in 1998. John, as we discussed earlier, the Peets have lost three first round series, so Plenty of playoff experience on the Peets roster, but no winning playoff experience. Well, from what we're seeing here tonight, they've got a lot of staying power and tenacity, and if things keep going the way they appear to, they're going to gain a little more playoff experience in the next couple of weeks. There is the Lindsay native, Lindsay Plunkett, Coach Dave Cameron, trading Chris Menard to Washington at the trade deadline, looking for that much needed playoff experience and it's paid off. Look at one of the majors top playoff performers. In fact, one of only four majors with any playoff experience coming into these, this series. The others, Lauren Mesita and Matt Bacon with limited experience in North Bay. And TJ Reynolds who saw a little bit of action in Oshawa. Off the draw, Pete's getting shot on goal, and Keanu had to stretch. Vada will bring it up the right wing, pass behind Matty Ellis. As the buzzer sounds, so after one period of play, a Pete's leading 2-1 on a pair of power play goals. And when we come back for the second period, the Majors will continue on the power play for another 36 seconds. Well, early in the game, the uh, Peterborough Pete's had very few opportunities, but up crops two power play opportunities and they take advantage of those to go ahead in the game two to one. 
Roger Lajoie standing by with our intermission. The Peterborough Peets leading the majors 2-1. Well, the Peterborough Peets are doing what they've done throughout this series to date. They're coming back from a deficit. The St. Michael's Majors had a quick start in Game 7, got the first goal. But guess what? As they have in the entire series, coming back from a 3-1 series deficit, the Peets come back again in this game. They scored two unanswered goals after one period of play. A very tense seventh game here at St. Michael's College School Arena. It's 2-1. The Peterborough Peets leading the St. Michael's Majors. 40 minutes. A great hockey still ahead of us. Right now, pleased to be joined by good friend Terry Durrell from Czechs Durham TV in uh, the Oshawa area. Terry has also covered the Peterborough Peets extensively this year. Terry, great to talk with you in the studio. And boy, what a series we got. And I don't think after game four, a lot of people thought we'd be here for game seven. No, give the uh, Peets a lot of credit, Roger. It's just a case the Peterborough Peets able to bounce back. Rick Elaine, Steve Smith, able to get his troops back on an even keel and get Captain Matt Karkner back playing the type of hockey he's able to play. And I think that's the big key there. Matt Karkner, I thought, I said this to a few people before this game, he's the key to this series. He's the key to this game. If he plays on his game, not take stupid penalties like he was known to do in some of the games back in Peterborough, even game four back in Peterborough, if he can play on his game, the Peets have a good chance here tonight and obviously uh, showing up 2-1 right now. Confidence is such a factor in the series, Terry, and you know it's unbelievable because game five of this series, the Majors leading 3 nothing, and we keep talking about it here, and you got to think maybe in the dressing room the Majors are thinking a little bit too much about it as well. They re basically had this series in the bag, and now look what happened. They did, and you have to wonder whether there was a little bit of an overconfidence by the St. Michael's Majors. But at the same time, as you mentioned, it's usually a case where obviously the Peterborough Peets have the momentum, and the Majors know we've got to get that momentum away from the Peterborough Peets, and it's going to be the leadership of the Majors that's going to be called upon here. The Lindsay Plunkett's players like that who have been through the playoffs, while the Majors obviously it's their first time in the playoffs, and for the Ryan Walshers and veterans on this team, they haven't don't have that playoff experience. A Lindsay Plunkett who's been to an OHL championship, he's got to be a player that's got to be called upon in that Majors dressing room to lead the troops there. Terry, what about the Peets? Here's a funny team. You know, they've been funny, inconsistent all year. They've been up and down at the trading deadline. They were only two points away from missing the playoffs. Then they moved up the Eastern Conference standing, seemed to go back into a bit of a funk. Up and down roller coaster. Same thing in this series. They're one and three to start, and now two periods away from making it three and oh. What gives with this team? The only consistent thing with the Peterborough Peets this year has been inconsistency. They lost seven to one on January 11th at home to the Oshawa Generals. That was rock bottom for the Peterborough Peets, and they basically looked up from there as the Peets season has gone. Steve Smith, their assistant coach, which easily said that. That was rock bottom for us. We got back on an even keel. We sort of got away after that game. They went out bowling the next day. They didn't have a hard practice or anything like that. They just kind of got back to being a team. And that's the key for the Peterborough Peets. They're not a flashy hockey club as we've seen throughout this series, but maybe they can be the better team. And that's going to be the key. Obviously, Joey McDonald can be very solid in their goal. But after that, it's just a lot of team playing little simple things and taking advantage of their opportunities and two power play goals is what we've seen. Nothing like a little bowling. I've heard a lot of teams <laughs> try that strategy. There's no doubt about it. You would look at the St. Michael's Majors, and it's unfortunate you don't even want to bring it up and say it, but I'll ask you the question because you know you're from the Durham area, so maybe it's not as tough for you to answer. Is this a choke? I wouldn't call it a choke, Roger. I think the majors have been in these games. It's not like after game uh, after game four and, or after game five and game six and that they were blown out by any means. That would be a choke, obviously, if they were being blown out and they weren't in the games. It's just a case that they're not as hungry for, to, for that little extra bit to win that fourth game. They were hungry enough to win game two and three, but they weren't hungry enough to win that fourth game in the series, and that's the key so far. The Peter Peterbopeats have been hungrier in games five and six. If the majors can bring out that hunger in the last 40 minutes, they can come up with the win. We've obviously got some of the home faithful and obviously the smaller arena on their side, but the question is who's going to be the hungrier hockey team so far. The first 10 minutes of the first, the majors were. After that, the Peets took over, and as I said, took advantage of their opportunities, and that's where we've got 2-1. That's Terry Doyle, of course, very familiar voice for our friends uh, who are watching tonight's game in the Durham region. Of course, Terry with Chex TV Durham and doing a great job there uh, as well. Terry, uh, thanks again, and uh, well, let's look forward to the last two periods and uh, maybe a long playoff run for one of these two teams. I'm looking forward. Thanks, Roger. Thank you. That's Terry Doyle. Well, Peter Ackman took the Rogers television cameras down to Peterborough for Game 6, and it was quite a game for the Peterborough Peets. Here's a package of highlights now from the Peets' 4-1 win in Game 6 of this series. Peterborough Memorial Arena, site of Game 6, where the Majors look to wrap up their first round series with the Peterborough Peets. The St. Mike's Major regular season leading scorer Ryan Walsh. He's hoping his team can get to the Peets early. In the first period, St. Mike's on the power play. Point shot. 
by Mike Bannum. Big rebound to Daryl Bootland. Puts the Majors up 1-0 in the second period. Pete's pressing. Brad Self goes down low. Centers the puck. Tipped by Majors forward Chris Boucher. Ties the game at 1. Still second period. Majors on the power play. Pete breakout two on one Matt Herniser beats Andy Chiodo for a 2-1 lead things go from bad to worse for the majors in the third period Eric Stahl jams the puck under Chiodo to stretch the lead to three to one then the mics completely lose their composure when Drew Fata in the crease picks up the puck the result a penalty shot. Marcel Rodman gets the call and he makes no mistake. Breaking in on Chiodo, goes upstairs. Pete's win game six, four to one, and force a decisive game seven. After the game, we caught up with Daryl Bootland and coach Dave Cameron. We uh, we were pre pre prepared to take this game, this, this series right to game seven. So uh, it unfortunately it happened and uh, Hey, we can still we still have a chance to win this, and we, we're at the advantage now in our own barn again. So uh, we know they don't like playing in our own barn. So hopefully we can take it. Well, we're disappointed. I mean, anytime you lose two games in a row in the playoff, you expect your hockey club to be disappointed. If you care about what's going on and you care about uh, you know what your team does when you lose, you better be disappointed. What are you looking to do to score? With only one goal in their last five periods of play, the St. Mike's Majors will have to step up their offense in order to beat the Peets in Game 7. Reporting for Rogers, I'm Peter Ackman. Well, thanks very much for that report, Peter. Appreciate it. And that was an exciting Game 6, of course, the Peterborough Peets winning 4-1. to one. Joining us in the studio now, Sanaya Sapurji from the Toronto Star and WayMoreSports.com, a great internet site for junior hockey fans. Do a great job there. Sanaya, nice to talk with you and let's talk about this series. What has happened to the majors? They had a 3-1 series lead here. You've been following the series and it's almost slipping away from them as we speak. Well, one of the things Dave Cameron had, had mentioned after their uh, second loss was the fact that this is a very inexperienced team um, outside of uh, Lindsey Plunkett, who they picked up at the trade deadline. Not too many of these kids have, have made it into the playoffs before for. So uh, that, that may have been uh, one of the factors leading up to, to their collapse. Um, uh, they've had breakdowns in the second and third period which have really hurt them. Um, they tend to come out strong in the first but after that they sit on their heels and, and the Peets really take it to them. This is exactly what's happened tonight. Funny. You know, the shots are, you look up and the shots are 7-3 uh, to three or 10-3. to three. It's one nothing. Everything's going the Majors' way. They get the power play goal. And it's just like the momentum. You can almost just see it swing the other way. The series has had a predictable pattern, hasn't it? Mm -hmm. Yeah, outside of, of uh, game number two, the Majors have scored first in, in uh, all, of, all of the games. But uh, outside of that, I mean, in, uh, in their game on, on Sunday, they had a 3 nothing lead in the second period, but they allowed the Peets to come back. They could have put it away at that point. But uh, it, it's, I don't think it's just, it's just not sticking, um, sticking in their heads that they can actually win this thing. Well, that has playoff experience. You see that with a lot of teams, there's no doubt. What about the crowd in here tonight? It's nice to see this building rocking for a change. You know, people are in the hallways in here. I think it's absolutely terrific. Took long enough, but there's a lot of Peterborough fans here. But this is like the kind of atmosphere that I think the majors hoped for when the franchise first came back to Toronto. Oh, definitely. And I know that their board of, of uh, directors are meeting tomorrow to decide on whether or not they, they are going to approve the uh, Ken Cook bid, which uh, many are, are saying uh, may move the, the team to Cornwall. So uh, uh, turnout like this is, is definitely gonna gonna help um, Peterborough I believe has uh, has 300 tickets the marketing people said they put 300 in, uh, tickets on hold for for Pete's and I know I know that they uh, had one bus come down but they are definitely making a, a lot of noise well, it's great to see in an atmosphere. There's no doubt about it. We talked about waymoresports.com, and people know your work in the Toronto Star, of course, but uh, during the current uh, Star Carrier uh, strike, it's been difficult for people in the outlining, readings to outlining areas to get the early paper, like those of us in Durham, to pick up the scores. But that doesn't mean the Toronto coverage has really improved this year, Sanaya, in the Star. But especially waymoresports.com gives you an opportunity to really elaborate, and fans online, I know following the Canadian Hockey League, so many people. Tell us about that. Yeah, uh, waymoresports.com. We have a, a junior hockey center section that's uh, dedicated to all three leagues, the uh, OHL, the uh Quebec League and also the, the Western Hockey League and we try and keep it as up to date and as current as possible. Um, you can get uh, full game stories uh, and my notebook is, is also online uh, every Wednesday. 
It's a terrific section. There's no doubt about it. That's waymoresports.com. It's an nice superb. You didn't even want to do this. You were fantastic. What are you talking? You can be the intermission host now. I'm terrified. <laughs> Did a great job. Thanks so much Thanks, tonight. Roger. That's Anaya Sapergi again of the Toronto Star and waymoresports.com. Back upstairs now for their analysis of that first period. The Pete's lead 2-1. to one. Once again, Tim Haffey and John Walsh. Thank you, Roger. And very sporting, I think, of the St. Mike's marketing department, John, to provide those 300 tickets for the Peterborough Pete's fans who are certainly among the most enthusiastic in the Ontario Hockey League. But uh, even if they hadn't, I think those 300 tickets would have been snapped up by, by local fans. Uh, this game was a hot ticket. Game 7, OHL playoffs as you might expect. Well, some, several good points brought up in that discussion, and uh, most notably, uh, the Majors have come out with plenty of jump in this series, but the Peets, one of the most storied franchises in the Ontario Hockey League, they've been known for years for their work ethic. They're not a team that rolls over. They're maybe slightly overmatched in the series. It looked that way coming in, but they've shown this incredible ability to bounce back and compete when they're down by one goal, two goals, three goals, whatever, and they certainly came back in that first period, went ahead 2-1 and a couple of power play goals. Well, they did, no question. You know, you look at the St. Mike's Majors. They came out and they were on fire. And they, they hemmed the Peets into their own zone. And then all of a sudden, you know, after about five minutes of hockey, they got very tight. And, Tim, I mean, tight's only good if you're a drum and if you're drinking. Uh, you know, you look at these guys, they've got to loosen up a little bit, and they've got to start playing hockey. And that's, that's the problem now. We look at some of the situations in front of the net. Well, you know, they're, they're too wound up. They're looking for other things to happen. Just play, play basic hockey, cover your man in front of the net. We saw two men wide open and create deflections, which both beat Andy Kyoto. What we're going to look at here is the go-ahead goal for the Peterborough Peets. You know, Krychek, or Foster shoots it over to Krychek. Great positioning, dead center in front of the net. And what happens? Brad Self is in front of the net just to, to get enough of a stick on it. Or actually, not Brad Self, I think it's Rodman in this case. No, that was Brad Self, the goal scorer. No, it's Rodman that deflects it down and gets it past Andy Kyoto. This is actually the uh, first Peterborough goal. Second one, very similar. We saw two Peterborough Peets in front of the net, and all Krychek had to do was send it in front, and one of them deflected it, uh, Self, I believe, to put the Peets ahead by two. Well, Brad Self with the go-ahead goal. That was the Brad Self goal we saw there with number 18 in front of the net to make it 2-1. And, and Brad Self, Mr. Peterborough Pete, a third-year Pete, a Peterborough native, leads the Peets in playoff scoring, and he's having a whale of a series. Let's go back to Roger as well. Thanks very much, Tim and John, and indeed a very entertaining and a very noisy building they're watching this game in. The Peterborough Peets lead the St. Michael's Majors 2-1. to one. Familiar script in this game. The Majors jumped in front early, had the shots advantage, had the pressure on the Peets, but Joey McDonald hung in until the Peets offense could get going, and that big power play deflection goal we saw made it 2-1, to one. and that's where we stand after 20 minutes of play. Peets leading the Majors. This is Game 7 of the Eastern Conference Final. I know a lot of nervous people watching this game, not just in Peterborough and Toronto, but in Ottawa as well. See who's going to play who starting Friday night. Here's the max scoring summary from the first period. Ryan Walsh opened the scoring at 4-11. Chris Boucher alone assist on that goal to make it 1-0. Then Marcel Rodman at 13-10. Eric Stahl and Lucas Krychek. Interesting story that Krychek is even playing tonight. Ties the score at 1-1. And then Brad Self at 18-23 from Curtis Foster and Krychek makes it 2-1. That's where we're at after 20 minutes. 15-11 the shots for the call of the second period. Let's go back upstairs now. Here's Tim Haffey and John Walsh. Andy Keanu and the Majors trailing 2-1 in this must-win game seven. Majors facing their first playoff must-win game. In the four-year history of the modern Majors, the Peets have staved off elimination twice already in this series. Brad South, arguably the Peets playoff MVP, although Joey McDonald would get serious consideration as well. Leading playoff score with a go-ahead goal as we saw in the intermission. Peterborough native, hard-working veteran. Took the year off lacrosse to concentrate on hockey this year. Eighth round draft pick of the Buffalo Sabres, one of four NHL drafted Peets. Majors have two NHL drafted players and five that are ranked for the upcoming draft, including this man, Mark Popovic, ranked number eight. Pass on the left wing for Kevin Klein with Tim Brent. Brent sends it back for Walsh for Popovic. Majors continuing the power play. 
Here's Pavlovic, can't get the shot off. Checked up by Self, and Chamberlain will poke it out to center. Majors on the power play for the first 36 seconds of this second period. And that power play is over as Matt Hernizen emerges from the box. Ryan Walsh up on the forecheck. 2-1 to score, the Peets in front. Brad Self works it loose. Takes the heavy hit along the boards. And the Majors penalty box is open. Lindsey Plunkett, Majors number one playoff performer. He's going to the box for a couple of minutes. And you see Ryan Walsh just catches a bit of a high stick under the face mask there and he goes down. And a little bit of retaliation from Lindsey Pluckett will probably get checking from behind. Maybe cross-checking. Check from behind it is. Fifty-three seconds into the first period. For a second period rather, so the Pete's in the power play for the fourth time in this game, and they are two for three. Armstrong's shot is blocked. Foster will keep it in. Finds Brio in the corner. Back for Foster. For Armstrong. Foster, Armstrong, Foster again. Now for Krychek. For Foster. Pass too far for Armstrong. Brio will take over. Popovic got a stick on it. Now Brio sends it back of the net. And the pass by Greg Chambers carrying all the way out and back for Joey McDonald with 105 to go in the penalty. Krychek. Quickly up on the left wing. Stahl finds Foster. He'll take it right side. Gets a bad bounce. Now bouncing puck in front as Ellis converging on Eric Stahl. Brad Self sets up along the boards. Tried to send it through the middle. Reynolds blocked it. Now for a cry check for Foster again. Couldn't handle it. And the puck escapes to center. Foster, lead pass for Self. Gains the line. Catches a hit from Drew Fata. And Reynolds will clear it out with 34 seconds to go in the penalty. Lucas Krychek. Back for Matt Karkner. The captain of the Peets. The retreat back of the net. Timmy Brent up in the forecheck. Karkner for Krychek. Rink-wide pass. Knocked down by Brent. Popovic will send it off the glass and out. 12 seconds to go in the penalty. Scramble for the puck. Poked ahead, here's Brad South. Puts the shoulder into Popovic. And now Popovic will take over. Popovic is checked. Chance side of the net for Self and Kyoto with the save. Now Popovic will gently send it out to center. Plunkett with Walsh charging for the net. Pass behind Walsh. Billy Zalba clears it ahead for Hoare as the Peets called on the two-line offside. This has to be a bit of a confidence booster for the Majors. You know, killing off the penalty for, that the uh, Lindsey Plunkett incurred. You know, for most of that time, they had Peterborough back in their heels a little bit. Only for a few minutes of the beginning of the penalty did Peterborough have total control in the Majors' end. Now if they can take that and work with it a little bit. Sizable Majors cheering section back of the penalty box. Matty Ellis and Stephen Hoare will step in for this draw. And the Wellett native Ellis will control back for Boucher at the point, but the Peets will take possession. Pass on the left wing as Armstrong took the hit from Goff. Hoare's shot is blocked. He'll follow up and knock down by Boucher. Lucas crashes into Zalba. Zalba comes up with it. Now for Armstrong, back of the net. Armstrong kicks it ahead. Working the half board, cycles for a whore. Salvo will take over, intercepted by Goff. Armstrong quickly moving to Goff, but Boucher will take it up the right wing. For Ellis, gains the line, and puts the shot on as McDonald steered it aside. Ellis sliding that shot along the ice. Lucas, Rashad just wide. Lucas will chase it down, back of the net. 
as Frankie Lucas darting it to the middle and putting that wrister just wide, John. Well, this line has had a little bit of success. We looked at Matt Ellis just taking a bit of a misdirection shot. He's going one way, sending it back the other. McDonald just able to snap the leg out to get it. We remember back in the first period with Ellis, just backhanded one that caught the post in the crossbar. Lucas there. Now this line's coming on a little bit. They've got to get some more opportunities. Try to put that puck behind them. One of the early stories in this game is a Peterborough power play. Two for 30 coming in, but two for four in this game. So unexpected clutch production from the Peaks power play unit. Tyler Cook bumping with Greg Chambers. Bouncing puck, Hernizen looking for Gagnon. Now Foster will step up. We'll see a lot of ice for Krychek, Foster, and Karkner in that Peach blue line. Daniel reaches for the pass. Foster with a wrist shot. Knocked down, and Kyoto will apply the glove. Interesting combination, Tim. I don't know if we've seen here before. Steve Ferguson, Adam DeLue, and Matt Bacon. All three grinders trying to stir things up a little bit. Matty Bacon acquired midseason from the North Bay Centennials in the deal that's... Uh, Jeff Doyle go north, second year, 17-year-old. He's not a fellow that's going to score a lot of goals, but what he is going to do is he's going to create opportunities for others to score. Well, he's one of only two young forwards for the majors. The others are all 18 and up. Bacon, 17. Tim Brent, the underage. Majors with a, a veteran-laden team, especially up front, a little younger in the blue line. And very young in goal with the 17 year old Kyoto and the 18 year old Budai. And right off the draw, Kyoto tested as Eric Stahl, the rookie, winning that draw cleanly and Brad Self one timing it. Well, you know, you, you look at that line of Stahl, Self, and Rodman. To draw one cleanly and Rodman's sitting there. He just sees that puck open for a few seconds, or a millisecond before Andy Kyoto puts his glove on it. You know what he's looking at? Peets win the draw again, and Foster puts the shot on goal. Eric Stahl, one of the top young players in the game. Most observers predicting within a year, two max, he will be the top player on the Peets. Maybe even next year, already playing on the number one line, centering Marcel Rodman and Brad Self, the two 19-year-old veterans. And of note, Eric Stahl worked his way up from the number four line all the way up to number one this year. Here's Kevin Klein, another underage who has taken great strides this year. Klein with the privilege of playing with Mark Popovic. Timmy Brent down the right wing. And although the majors are an older team, plenty of upside with the young players such as Brent, Fata, Klein. You project the majors lineup to next year and they have more than sufficient talent to compete again at a high level next season. And the Peets could be a force next year as well. They have a lot of 18-year-old forwards that will be only that much better next year. Adam Ballou, one of the classiest players in the OHL, John. Fourth year in this league. Here's a young fellow that has to, young fellow, veteran that has to step up to the plate. He's an OA. We just saw a glimpse of what he could do in the corner, Peterborough corner. He and Matt Karkner had a bit of a collision and you know, it's back to the day, old days of Adam DeLue, creating all those co collisions and turnovers. That was a fight for the ages between Kartner and DeLue in game five. As the Peets control the draw, and Elzinga will pound it off the inboard. Kartner keeps it in, weak shot. Fata blocks it, pass doesn't work for Bootlin. Bootlin will chase it over the line. Elzinga for Kartner now for John Howes. Howes one time and ahead for Brio, gains the line, takes it wide. Here's Brio back of the net, Cook in for a shoot, and Cook rides Brio to the boards. Chamberlain will take over, Kartner's shot well wide, off the net. Now DeLue will lift it off the boards and out to center. Back for Elzinga. Walsh up in the forecheck, Majors with their number one line, Walsh, Boodlin, and DeLue. Carol Boodlin have a little bit of a conversation with the linesman. Chad LaRose of the Plymouth Whalers leading all rookie scorers. Rick Nash, good looking underage from London. The Knights are out. And Eric Stahl and Frankie Lucas both playing in this game with six points in six games. Stahl, the underage, and Frankie Lucas, the 18-year-old Czech rookie. 
as Lucas lining up on the left wing here with Ellison Goff. Frankie Lucas, number six overall pick in the import draft last year, and three spots ahead of him, Lucas Krychek of the Peterborough Peets. The top two OHL selected imports both playing in this game as Billy Zalba, the native of Thurl, and Terry will go to the penalty box. I believe he's going to go in for holding the stick, Tim. So the Majors power play will get another shot 0 for 2 so far in this game. 6.09, the time of a penalty to Billy Zalba. Second year, 18-year-old acquired from the Owen Sound attack at the trade deadline. And the Majors control the draw. Klein shot is blocked by Chamberlain. Holding the stick indeed at 6.09, back for Frankie Lucas. Majors with three rookies in this power play, Lucas, Klein, and Brett. The veterans, Ellis and Plunkett, working up front. Here's Brett, second overall pick. In the OHL draft last year as the Peets clear the zone. Cracking the Majors lineup direct from Cambridge Junior B as Brent continues to battle at center. Lucas. Steers it away from Jamie Chamberlain. Chamberlain and Brad South. The Peets to NHL drafted forwards. Matty Ellis with possession. Puck in the corner, return for Ellis. Centering in front, and a nice job by John Howes covering Lindsey Plunkett on the play. Now Plunkett will get the shot off, knocked down in front. As he chases it along the boards and puck fired into St. Mike's territory. Here's a Lucas with Howes up for the forecheck. Lucas will lead the rush. Pass to an open wing. Pete's Kartner fires it off the end boards. 34 seconds to go on the power play. Walsh. Lead pass. Bullet on the breakaway. Partial breakaway. Gets the shot off as McDonald came out of the net. Now for Popovic, takes it on the skate, finds Walsh, Walsh under pressure from Kartner, now Walsh across for Drew Fata, in for Bootlet. Bootlet runs into trouble and Brad Self is sent it down the ice, that's the Peets kill off yet another power play, Billy Zalba steps out of the box and puts the shot on goal. opportunity for the Majors there to power play. Daryl Boulin sneaking across the blue line. Picked off a pass from I'm not sure which one of the Majors defense, but it was very astutely looking up ice and seeing the situation uh, start up. And we see the culmination of that. Daryl Boulin just gets a shot away. McDonald gets a bit of a stick on it to prevent it from going to the net. Daryl Boulin gets it up a little bit. The game's tied. Peterborough Peets hungry for a playoff series win. Joey McDonald has been in three first round series. Curtis Foster, Matt Kartner, John Brio. Several Peets veterans looking for their first taste of playoff series victory. Chris Boucher. Shot catches Bacon on the toe. Boucher around for Reynolds. Ahead for Mike Goff, Jamie Chamberlain. In his third year of the Peets, Brad Self, third year Pete. Dustin Wood has been with his team for three years. Here's the former Wexford Raider Jr. Dustin Wood. Great hustle by two of the majors trying to fend off that icing call. And it appeared that they had. Well, at least we're not going to get the face-off deep in their own zone. We've got a face-off happening at center ice here. Shots on goal, 18-15 in favor of St. Mike's as Ellis wins the draw for Popovic. Popovic will lead the rush. Key member of Team Canada's bronze medal effort in Moscow, Mark Popovic. Played in the CHL top prospects game this year along with a pizza, Lucas Krychek. Here's Matty Ellis. Pass for Popovic. 
We'll send it into Pete's territory as McDonald leaves it for Elzinga. Rings it around the board. Klein keeps it in. Shot well wide. Bacon working up front. Now Krychek to the puck. Krychek gets it ahead for Greg Chambers. Goff working Chambers over along the boards. Make that Armstrong. Matt Armstrong. Now for Klein. Puts the shot on goal. McDonald will steer it aside. Krychek knocks over Goff. Ellis with the steal. Ellis centering. As Elzinga. Sends it down the ice. Pass was intended for Marcel Rodman who heads to the bench. Kevin Klein, long lead pass for Matt Bannon. Now Stephen Hoare throws it deep. Kyoto. For Adam Delu. Delu steers it away from Herneisen, being hooked up by Chambers. As Dustin Wood pounds it off the boards. Majors changing up the D. Drew Fata. Chambers up on the forecheck. Here's Fano with a little head fake. Working his way to center. Finds Bannon. The drop from Masita. Masita checked. Delu will take over. Now Fano with a pretty hard return pass for Delu. Delu into the corner. Now back of the net. Matty Bannon up there. Here's Fano shooting. Wide rebound. Bannon can't stuff it in. As Drew Fano put everything he had into that slap shot. Well, I don't know, Tim. The way I see it here is somebody has to want to take this game. The play in the last few minutes has been pretty scrambled, except for a few minutes here. We don't see anybody looking particularly strong. Good opportunities on both sides, but they're not doing anything with them. Matty Bannon desperately trying to put that loose puck past Joel McDonald. If Drew Fatt had an ounce of energy left after that shot, it's surprising. He just unloaded that. Late in the season, we saw Drew Fata start to pound in, pound in the goals from the point, so he is confident with that shot from the point. Let's go ringside to Roger Lajoie. Coming up during our second intermission, Pete Dalladay will join us. He has a very special distinction tonight. He's doing color commentary for this game. His father, Gary, is doing the play-by-play. And we'll also be joined by Ken Bodendistel of the Ontario Hockey League. That's coming up during our second intermission. Back upstairs, here's Tim and John. Thank you, Roger. The Dow the Dalladay name, very well known in Peterborough Pete Broadcasting Circles. Gary and Pete Dalladay. Got to know them very well over the last four years of following the majors, and especially during this seven-game playoff series. John House caught up along the boards by Tyler Cook. Cook from the Peterborough area, Bowmanville native. And John Howes, the second year 17 year old from Oshawa, Ontario. A bit of a digger this series, Tim. Showing a, again that typical Peterborough tenacity, not willing to give up. Howes, another product of the Peterborough Pete's, the Peterborough B's Junior A program. Beats win the draw, Karkner across for Dustin Wood. Wood pass too far for self, Klein will take over. But John, the Peterborough Peets truly one of the most storied franchises in the Ontario Hockey League, 25 straight playoff appearances. Plenty of famous hockey people have worked at Peets bench, Scotty Bowman, Mike Keenan, Roger Nielsen, and the current twosome of Rick Elaine and to his right, Steve Smith. Steve Smith, a former Peterborough Pete himself, is just out of the picture, but he is to Rick Elaine's right. Off the draw, here's Popovic, thought about shooting it, checked up by Rodman. Now for Lukash. Klein can't keep it in, Self loses his stick, that will allow Klein to fetch the puck. Here's Ellis, ahead for Klein. Rodman with the steal. Here's Rodman down the off wing, but Popovic catches up with him. Now Foster with a hard shot at Kyoto, another key save. Well, again, Tim, it seems to have a bad situation. Nobody really wants to take charge here. 
Couple of mistakes by the St. Michael's Majors, allowing Peterborough a good scoring opportunity by Kurt Foster, but smothered by Andy Kyoto, not allowing to rebound. The Brad Self leading the Pete's in scoring coming in. Eric Stahl, the rookie, Marcel Rodman, that's their number one line. Matty Armstrong and Jamie Chamberlain. There's Marcel Rodman. He's ranked number 178 for the NHL draft. Now, that isn't terribly impressive. Oh, it is interesting that he's a 19-year-old. He was passed over once, and at least this year, earning a ranking. 2 on one for the majors. Bacon with Boucher. Shot score! Take that Daryl Boudin, number 27, and the majors tie on this game at two. Well, I think what you got to look at the real key to this goal. It's not Daryl Boudin. It's not the defensive positioning, it's Chris Boucher. Right from the get-go on that face-off, he saw what was coming. You see this young fellow hustling, going right to the net, creating that diversion so that Daryl Berlin could pop it in the net. Look at Chris Boucher at the far side there. Coming down, he's all hustle. He doesn't want the puck. He's just creating that diversion, going straight to the net. So Daryl Berlin, the shooter, can put it in. 11.37, the time of a tying goal by Daryl Boudlin. Boudlin's third goal of the playoffs. Ryan Walsh trying a lone assist to the goal by Daryl Boudlin. Walsh's second point of the game as Deleu bumps with his man. Chamberlain on the receiving end of that check as Fata pounding it on goal. And here's John House back the other way. House throws it through the middle. Both Brio and Chamberlain covered on the play. Now for Drew Fata. Right wing for Deleu. This game tied at two as Wood moves to Deleu. And the Peets throw it out to center. 7.32 to go in the second period. Four regular season meetings. This is the seventh playoff meeting. 11 games between these two teams this year, and they've all been close. Here's Kevin Klein. No team has won by more than two goals. Dustin Wood, shot blocked by Drew Fata. Check that, shot blocked by Tim Brent. And McDonald. Here's a steal, Tim Brent. Looking for the wraparound, but sliding over was Dustin Wood. Shot Jimmy. blocked by Tim Brett, who then proceeds to chase it down and steal it from Kurt Foster to create a great scoring opportunity for the Majors. You know, we got to look at the hustle of this young rookie here. Well, if we go back far enough, maybe we can't, to see him, how he blocks that shot, we hear it bounce off the shin pad, so he caught it somewhere around the, the shin, the knee, possibly. But then the bounce right back up, hustled down the ice, and pretty well beat Kurt Foster to the puck. Here we see the replay, uh, the uh, block shot, just around the right knee or left knee, I should say. But the hustle gets right back up, hustling down. Good scoring opportunities thwarted by Dustin Wood of the Peets. There's Drew Fan at the point for Mike Goff. He'll let it go. McDonald the save. Here's Cook to the shot. Got Frankie Lucas. Goff and Lucas looking to chase it down. Hernizen throws it to center now. Tyler Cook bumps with Hernizen for Mike Goff. Play whistle down to John. I must stand corrected. There was a 3 0 game in this series, won by the Majors. But even that was a close game. They haven't all been super duper close, but suffice to say, these two teams meeting for the 11th time in this playoff and uh, this season. And well, they, they've all been tight games. No team has, has run away with any of these games. We're looking at Kurt Foster there, an integral part of the Peterborough Pete's offense. Although he's a defenseman, he likes to jump into the rush there. And he is the quarterback in the power play, seeking some attention. And we know he's had a bit of a damaged knee for the better part of these playoffs. Hopefully it's nothing serious. He'll be back out in a few moments. And there were a couple of Peterborough 4-1 wins in this series, but both involved empty net goals. 6.34 to go in the second period. We'll watch that Curtis Foster situation. And a 
the two big veteran bodies on this Peterborough D is there's Bacon letting the wrist shot go high and wide. Klein steps up. Foster and Parker are the two anchors of this Peterborough defense, both NHL second round picks. Foster could do a little sign with Calgary in the half season. Here's Brad Self, a head fake on Kevin Klein. He didn't go for it. Klein rides him over the boards, and here is Bacon lifting it over the glass. 6.02 remaining in this period. Well, we've seen a little bit seen a little bit more energy by the majors here after that scoring, uh, that goal by uh, Daryl Boodlin. The overage veteran, Lindsey Plunkett, leading the majors in playoff scoring. Frankie Lucas and Timmy Brandt, a couple of rookies. Matty Ellis and Mike Goff, both third-year veterans. You know, going back to the scoring opportunities, you know, we've seen the majors come close a lot. And Joey McDonald isn't looking as sharp as he had in the past. But the problem is, the majors just have to find that 24 square. Off the draw, Dustin Woods shot does not get through. Ron Walsh will take over. Walsh ahead for Bootlet. Adam Elzinga sends it back of the net. Here's John House. Unable to handle the bouncing puck. Majors converge. Now Walsh for Boucher. Drew two peaks to him. Finds Walsh for Galoo in the corner. Here's Galoo back of the net. Oh, Reynolds, he was stepping on a rising shot. And again, McDonald with the glove. Well, let's take a good long look at Joey McDonald. Picto, Nova Scotia. Fourth year in the CHL. And John, just a wall in that Peterborough net. Just makes every save you can reasonably expect him to make. Well, he has been terrific. Frequently, he'll get a goalie that's hot for a game or two. But consistently, he's been hot for the Peets in all seven games here. Brian Finley in the battalion, Seamus Connick in Ottawa, Mike Smith and Sudbury all into the next round. Peter Budai with some nice numbers, but backing up Andy Kyoto here this evening. And Joey McDonald, number five in goals against average over the 2001 OHL playoffs. So one of Budai, one McDonald will advance. Back for Mark Pavlik. The Western Conference matchups are set. The Brampton Battalion will take on the number one ranked Erie Otters. Rematch of last year's first round series won by the Otters. And Jason Spezza and the Windsor Spitfires will open against the number two ranked Plymouth Wales. Here's Krychek, back of the net. Belleville, Sudbury, and Iowa winning the outcome of this game in the Eastern Conference as Kyoto will apply the glove, 4.46 to go in the second period. Well, if Mark Popovich doesn't make it as a hockey player, which is a real long shot, he could make it as a pickpocket, the way he just sort of uh, got his hand in uh, Rodman's body there and uh, picked him up and took him out of uh, harm's way in front of Andy Kyoto. Very smooth move there, Pops. Well, if Mark Popovic returns next year as a fourth-year player with the Majors, he can blow up a lot of the Majors' all-time scoring records. Easily the Majors' highest scoring defenseman all-time. Would have a good shot at catching Ryan Walsh as the all-time leading scorer. Pass Walsh in all time games played. Here's Fata. Checked up by Billy Zalba. That will, of course, another face off. 435. Remaining in the middle frame. 2 2 the score. Both teams have led by one goal. Majors up 1 0 in the first period and Ryan Walsh's goal. Pete's going ahead 2 1 in the first. Couple of power play goals by Rodman himself. But Daryl Woodland bringing the Majors even here in the second. Well, there's a Steve Farkson fan club we just took a look at. Steve's on the ice there, and they just love his play. All right, the Pickering native, Steve Farkerson, getting a shift. Role player with the majors as Curtis Foster takes it over the line, but a critical role player in many cases. Good banger, provides a lot of toughness up front for St. Mike's. He'll be one of the veteran players that can return next year as Dustin Wood sends it back for Foster. Ahead for Zalba. Zalba gains the line. Zalba sends it to the middle, and Kyoto will cover up, and Billy Zalba's had a tough series, John. He's had to miss a couple of games due to injuries, but he's fought his way back into the lineup. He's tucked it out, making an appearance in game six, and 
here for game seven as well. Had the opportunity to chat with him a little bit uh, earlier before the game, and you know, he's quite eager to get back in the light. A bit of an injury problem, and that kept him out for one, uh, possibly two of the games, but nonetheless, he's back and an integral part of this team. Well, speaking of the fan clubs, Tim, remember those fan clubs of last year when we were at the gardens and come in and tear the shirts off and they'd have their chest stamped with somebody's uh, name and whatever else? Whatever happened to them? Well, maybe that was more of a gardens ACC phenomenon. We saw a lot of that at the Air Canada Center this year as El Zinga puts the shot on goal from the point. Well, the young guys like to run around those big buildings and strip the shirt off and take advantage of the extra space that it was like Midley Cards and they're kind of sitting at four. Here's Parker at the point. He'll let it go. It's through. Kind of skate. And you cut Pichet in the skate. Now Hernison went for a tumble. Reynolds will lead the rush. Games the line and runs it to Chamberlain. Chamberlain had a run and TJ Reynolds. Daryl Bullet at his agitating best. Trying to get under the skin of. Can't see who it is right now. Oh, Adam Elzinga. Brother Nick playing for the Hershey Bears. They're both in the Colorado Avalanche system. Father Bootland will telling me he'll be in uh, Hershey tomorrow night to watch older son Nick play. He was a big star in this league with the Guelph Storm. As Daryl said earlier in the year on one of our broadcasts to Roger Lazra, Nick kind of blazed the trail for him, established the Bootland name. All right, look at the number of people here that are jam-packed. It, it takes a lot to get an arena ready like this, and, you know, with the close proximity of this rink and whatever else. And the two people that do a great job prepping this rink are the Tunney brothers, Rob and Steve, the managers of St. Michael's College Arena. Great job on their part being able to put a product on the ice like this. See Darren Lowell, the head coach of UOT Blues, is in the house as well. Here's Klein, back of the net. Three former majors playing for Darren Lowe this year. Brian Simpson, Mark Hines, Ryan Rasmussen. Maddie Ellis, York University student, battling back of the net. Here's Foster with a shot to fuck down. And Mike Dock gets that loose puck. A couple of peeps were hovering in the area. Now Krychek will take over. Gets caught up with the linesman momentarily, finds Foster. Foster's lead pass for Stahl. Stahl got a piece of it, majors clear it back out. And Matty Ellis in a race with Foster, but Foster beats him to it. Clear it around to the right wing. Here's Rodman ahead for Eric Stahl. Takes a little hop, skip, and a jump. Now for Tyler Cook. Pass for Goff. Sends it to the line. Foster again, 2.34 to go in the period. 2-2 to score. Game 7, OHL Eastern Conference quarterfinal. John Brio over skates the puck. And Tyler Cook ahead for Matt Bannon. And poke check by Krychek. Messina rides, Kernizen into the board. Just came over the line. Bannon on the back check. Kernizen up to help. Kernizen follows up against Bata. Now Cook off the boards. And out at center it comes for Dustin Wood. Bannon knocking down that pass. Majors take over. Messina trying to connect with Bacon on the play. Lead pass, Chamberlain drags it around, Fanta committed, here's Chamberlain with room, pass for Brio, but Bannon got over and Kielo was there as well. Now Chamberlain taken up by Fanta. As Messina sends it off the boards, and John, we saw what Fanta was trying to do, he committed and got beat. Well, I'll tell you, he saw that puck coming, and he was already halfway down the ice on the breakaway. Except for one thing, you forgot about Chamberlain. Chamberlain fortunate to one time it by that and come in on this break. So John Brio did get a piece of it. Yeah, a little bit of it. Well, Tim, when you're talking about Darren Lowe, we're looking at the, you know, the Varsity Blues and the legend of the Varsity Blues as we know of Jim Byrne, a member of the uh, St. Michael's College School staff. And you were uh, at many of those Varsity games where Jim played. Do you have any memorable moments of, uh, of Jim? Well, Jimmy Byrne was one of the top shooters for the U of T Blues in the late 80s. Donnie McLaughlin and the other Big gun on that team. Pat Graham, the former Toronto Maple Leaf, played a half season for that U of T team. Jimmy Byrne, also a former Toronto Marlboro. It's Ryan Walsh, University of Toronto student. 
Uh, Ryan tells me if he does go to CI route next year, Lake will be out east. Here's Matt Carpenter. Walsh, the majors all time leading scorer. Four years with this team, the original major. Going back to the 1997 Jerry Meehan draft. There's Dave Cameron. Speaking of CIU, four years of PEI Panthers before turning pro. And Dave Cameron, one of those guys, came out of the CIU and cracked the NHL. There's more of them than you might think. Steve Ruchin gets a lot of attention. Mike Ridley and Randy Gregg, but there's quite a few others. Well, one of the first ones ever to do that was Red Berenson way back when. And, you know, since then, since he broke in, a lot of the NHL scouts started to look around to the uh, colleges. Paved the way for the future for some of these people. He's doing that John Travolta, Uma Thurman dance, John. A pulp fiction. Tim, how, he's not old enough to watch that film. One minute to go in this period as Lindsey Plunkett let the wrist shot go. Plunkett follows up, back of the net, 2 2 to score. Plunkett and Brio, the two overages, battling away. Hartman in there as well. Here's Timmy Brent, the 16 year old, caught up with the three 20 year olds. Now Popovic sends inside of the net. Plunkett is covered by Brio, and out it comes for Kevin Klein. And yeah, you really have to give Mark Osborne and Jack Ferguson the big thumbs up for their scouting job last year. The 200 ages, Brent and Klein, playing large roles in this playoff series. And a lot of underages spent a lot of time in the pitch in their rookie years. Even some of the top drafted ones. Well, I know that some of the uh, hockey aficionados uh, were really questioning their sanity after taking, uh, while well, Tim Brent early in the draft and uh, not only that but Kevin Klein thinking that there were possibly some pl better players available but what we see here is we got a pretty pretty good one two uh, combination of the two that we have here's another OHL first round pick Daryl Bootland drafted first round by the Barry Colts in 98 Majors will graduate at least six players following this year Have several quality overage options going into their fifth season. This franchise is fully matured and developed. And you know a franchise is developed when they go into that, when they have that first opportunity at, so up, at graduating their own uh, overage players. When they have all those overage options. They really didn't have it this year. They, they knew Walsh would come back. They were lucky to get the Lou back in Detroit. They got Plunkett in midseason. But they have exactly seven overage options for next year and all of them are quality useful ohl players as the buzzer sounds so after two periods of play it's still up in the air the peaks and the majors are tied at two well you gotta admit tim it's exciting playoff hockey going into the uh third period of the seventh game tied but you know what we saw in the second period is I, neither team really wanted to take charge. St. Mike scored a goal. We thought for a few minutes there they were going to take charge. But after that, it just kind of settled down again. Daryl Boodlin with a lone goal in the second period, bringing the majors even at 2-2. Roger Lajoie standing by with our second intermission. Well, it comes down to this. Game seven of the opening round of the Eastern Conference playoffs. The teams have played 20 periods, and we need one more period at least to decide this series. The Peterborough Peets two, the St. Michael's Majors two in game seven. The opening round playoffs is about as good as it gets in the Ontario Hockey League. A great hockey game tonight. We're in for an exciting last 20 minutes of play. And watching the uh, last 20 minutes of play along with us will be Ken Bodendistel, our guest here in studio. He is the OHL's Director of Supervision. I like that title, Ken. Explain that one for us. Well, there's really no explanation, uh, Roger. I think you had it straight in the first time when you said uh, supervisor and uh, 
director or supervisor of the supervisors or something like that. Yeah. <laughs> well, that's a pretty good thing. Now, you're supervising, of course, and what you're mostly concerned with is the officials and the officiating at it. What are you looking for tonight? What exactly is the role tonight? Well, I mean, we've got three pretty senior officials out there. So, I mean, in this, this type of game, you're, you're really just hoping that uh, our officials don't play a part in the outcome. Uh, I think they're, uh, Brad's letting them play, and uh, the players are reacting. And there's not a lot of nonsense. And normally in the game seven, uh, it's a relatively easy game to, to do because there's just so much on the line that they don't want to take any chances and taking fouls out there. What are you looking for in terms of evaluating? Come playoff time, you've obviously selected the top officials, Ken. So I've got to think most of your tough work is in the early part of the regular season when you're trying to decide the officials who are going to get into these games because obviously you want your marquee guys here. The best teams are here. It only goes to reason you want your best officials here too. Well, there's no question, Roger. And, of course, uh, this year, you know, we had uh, eight new officials, uh, three that had uh, any number of games uh, the previous year and five brand new ones this year. So, so eight out of a staff of 16 that, uh, you know, we had a lot of work to do during the year, but I must uh, say the coach and managers certainly understood the position we were in and they were very cooperative and, and you need that when you're bringing on that many young officials, you know, because we had five leave us and go to the National Hockey League uh, at the start of this year. So there's a lot of work to do and yes, we had to uh, evaluate them as the season went along and we had to cut down before the playoffs started. And we also had to make a decision to bring a couple of those young officials on into the playoffs, uh, at least in our first round. And then, of course, as we progress and as the teams decrease, then we obviously cut back in our number of officials as well. Ken, uh, that is one thing you, you hit on, going to the National Hockey League. And not only do players graduate from the Ontario Hockey League into the National Hockey League, but officials do as well. That's something you've got to be very proud of because this is just as much as it's a, pl a player's training ground, it's an official's training ground too, is it not? Well, there's no question. I mean, the Ontario Hockey League takes great pride in the number of officials that we've sent to the National Hockey League over the years. I don't know exactly what the number is now. I'm guessing somewhere around uh, 16, if I'm not mistaken, and that's a, that's a nice number. And uh, we're certainly proud of that. And uh, yes, we lost five, but uh, for the right reasons. Final question for you as you get ready and watch the rest of these playoffs. Now, have you already determined who's going to be officiating in the, in the last series in the OHL final? Or is that something that these guys are working towards? Oh, definitely something they're working toward. I mean, we, we have to cut back, as I said, and the, and the job gets tougher. And uh, the biggest and most difficult part of the job is to tell the officials that, that don't move on because it's, uh, it's very competitive and uh, we, hope it's, we hope it's competitive, makes our job tougher because then we're coming along with the best officials. That's Ken Bowden Distal, Director of Supervision of the Ontario Hockey League. I like that title, no doubt about it. Ken, done a good job with the officials. It's been a well-officiated game tonight. Here's hoping that we get a nice clean playoff as well. Thanks for joining us. Thanks, Roger. Ken Bowden Distal. When we return, a broadcasting legend family-wise in Peterborough, the Dalladays, father and son doing the game tonight. We'll talk to the son, Pete Dalladay, next. It's 2-2, the Peterborough Peets and the St. Michael's Majors. This is OHL Primetime on Rogers Television. Well, the fan signs are saying go Majors, and this building will be rocking for the third period because the Majors do need to get going. They're tied with the Peterborough Peets, 2-2 after 40 minutes. This is Game 7 of the Eastern Conference Final, and it's going to come down to one period at least to determine a winner in this series. What a great hockey game tonight, and what a terrific series this turned out to be after the uh, Majors seemed to have it in their own way in a 3-1 series lead. Joining us now from the Peets broadcast team is Pete Dalladay doing the play-by-play -play this year for the Peets. Last five years old, Pete has had the opportunity to work with his dad, Gary. Pete, it's always great to talk with you. We've talked many times, of course, in, in Oshawa, but I know a lot of our Toronto viewers would like to find out what's it like working with your dad. Uh, it's, it's a lot of fun, you know, it's, uh, you know, this is our fifth year, as you say, working together, and uh, he's uh, officially a Hall of Famer now in Peterborough, so I'm working with a Hall of Famer and, uh, and my dad at the same time, so it's, uh, it's pretty unique, uh, I guess it's sort of the Hewitts did it uh, way back when, and maybe some in between, but uh, it's, uh, it's something, as I, I've told you before, something I'll probably cherish a little later, I have an important job to do right now, and, and, uh, but it's something that'll probably hit me later that I'll really uh, remember. What's it like calling games like this? Your dad in the booth, or, or no, your dad not in the booth. You know, you got a seventh game here, 2-2 two -two after 40 minutes of play. It really doesn't get any better than that. For a hockey fan, and that's what we all are really deep down, this is as good as it gets. And uh, in this building, there's so much environment, so much electricity here tonight that uh, you can really feel it. Hopefully the fans listening back home and watching here on Rogers can feel it as well. It's a lot of fun, and it's, uh, it makes those road trips uh, to the Sioux and to Windsor, makes it all worth it this time of year. 
Peterborough Pizza, a great tradition. Uh, Pete, no question about it. You look back on the years, 25 seasons in a row now. This franchise has qualified for the playoffs, which is a remarkable achievement. And, you know, the Peterborough fans, you give them credit, maybe they don't turn out in the numbers that you like in the first round. But you look in this building tonight when the Pete score and the reaction is almost like the majors, they're out in full force tonight. Yeah, if you were a neutral fan and you came into this building, you wouldn't know if you were in a Peterborough Arena or, or a Toronto uh, building tonight because they are loud. they got their horns going and uh, the, the, the cheerleaders leaders uh, are in full force here tonight. I think they brought a couple fan buses up. So they're great fans. A little disappointing crowd on uh, on Tuesday night. There was only about 2,900. We can fit another thousand or so in there. But uh, I think a lot of them came tonight and uh, for game seven because they didn't want to miss it. What's, how do you read this series? It's it's 3-1, the majors, and of course, we had a chance to talk with Mike Davies and the Peterborough Examiner, of course, who follows all the games just like you do throughout the course of the year, Pete. And, uh, you know, after the first period uh, Sunday, we're thinking, well, you know, it's going to be awfully tough. It's never over until it's over, but, you know, boy, we probably won't see it Tuesday night in Peterborough. Well, we saw him Tuesday night in Peterborough, and we're seeing him Thursday night tonight. It just seems the momentum has swung towards the Pete's favor, but now, of course, the last 20 minutes, anything can happen. But what's your read on this? Yeah, it's been a crazy series, and, and uh, I go back to the 96 series, uh, the Pete's versus Guelph for the OHL championship. Uh, there wasn't a team that won on home ice in that series, and th this series reminds me of that series a little bit. Ironically, that game went into overtime in the, in the uh, seventh game, so we could be in for a little extra time tonight. It's a funny series. It's going to come down to a bounce. Uh, Goaltending has, has been big. Uh, Peter Buda picked up the three wins uh, for Toronto. I thought we might see him in there tonight, but uh, he didn't get the nod, and Joel McDonald has been uh, real solid uh, in goal, so uh, it's it's been an interesting one, but that's what the playoffs are all about. And in Peterborough, when you talk playoffs, this franchise is always in the playoffs. You talk the Dalladays as well. Gary, father, and son Pete, of course, a big part of hockey life in Peterborough for many, many years. And delighted to have you there. Enjoy the third period. Give you a few minutes to get back up to the booth, Pete, and uh, enjoy it. I'm going to need them. Thank you, Roger. Thank you. That's Pete Dalladay. Let's go upstairs to our broadcast booth now. Here's Tim Haffey and John Walsh. Thank you, John. Well, we've got quite the hockey game, 2-2 after two periods of play. The only goal of the second period scored by Daryl Boodlin. So we're going to take a look at uh, some of Daryl Boodlin's activity in that period. Had a near chance as well as the goal that made it 2-2. Well, Daryl Boodlin was one of the pieces of the St. Mike's puzzle that had to start fitting in. You know, he wasn't really uh, in the forefront for many of the games that has been play have been played so far. But what we see here is a real charge he puts on, you know, trying to get the, the puck and he beats uh, Matt Carger to the puck, has Joy McDonald at bay, and all that really has to happen is he just has to lift it over a stick and put it in the net. But what we see here is <clears throat> he isn't able to do it. Now here, right off the faceoff, Boulin picks up the puck. Great decoy by Chris Boucher, and Boulin sees the corner there, just takes a shot and beats Joy McDonald for the second major goal to tie this game up. Here we look at another angle of it. You know, we should see a little bit of intensity in his eye here. He's looking, he's looking, but, you know, if you see, think about the other view that we just saw, he's only going to do one thing, and that's shoot. He just overpowers McDonald with a shot, and it happens to go in the net. Well, Daryl Boodlin does have that dangerous wrist shot. You can see he took his time and, and uh, got the Peterborough defenseman all confused. He had to com commit to Boucher, and then a bit of traffic in front of McDonald on that goal as well, and Daryl Boodlin, a 32-goal scorer during the regular season, a majors franchise single season record a, a career high for Daryl Bootlin coming through with maybe the biggest goal of his career right there well when you look at uh, when the Peterborough Pete defenseman looks at the replay you know he's gonna wonder why he went so close to Chris Boucher here's a young fellow that doesn't really have a lot of soft hands you know but he did have to commit to the defenseman and Daryl Bootlin took advantage of it okay 2-2 the score let's go back to Roger thanks very much Tim and John 2-2 going to the third period game seven Flip a coin, anybody can win this series. The shots are close, the series is close. They've played 20 periods and nothing has been decided. And the Peets have come off the canvas. But the Majors coming off the ice after that second period looked pretty confident. And I think that goal was a huge, huge goal for the Majors. And there it is on our max scoring summary for the second period. Daryl Bootland, that's got to be his biggest goal so far in his OHL career. Ryan Walsh on the assist at 11.37, ties it up at... 2-2, the shot's 23-18, favoring the Majors after two periods of play. 8-8 in that second period, so it is tightening up. Here's a look at the rest of the OHL playoffs in uh, Series A. Belleville swept the Kingston front next 4-0, although Larry Mavity today got a vote of confidence, and he'll be back as coach GM in Kingston next year. So the Bulls move on, and Sudbury defeated the Barry Colts 4-1. So Belleville and Sudbury move on to the next round. Belleville the number one seed, Sudbury the number two seed. Who will be the number three seed? Well, it's the Majors if they win this series. If not... It's Ottawa, because Ottawa blasted North Bay 4-0. So Ottawa might be in Sudbury tomorrow night, 
or the majors might be in Sudbury tomorrow night. So Ottawa is waiting for the result of this one to see if they can get that bus started up and head out to Sudbury. So a lot at stake. Of course, this series tied 3-3, and Ottawa sweeping North Bay 4-0. So outside of all of the other series, which were pretty one-sided, this has been the jewel of the Eastern Conference playoffs, and we still have 20 minutes to play. We're going to take a short break. Come on back, though. Game 7, third period, 2-2 score, and we'll find out how this unfolds in a moment. This is OHL Primetime on Rogers Television. What do you got time here in the Eastern Conference first round playoff series? What do you got? Who wants it more? Pull out all the cliches. There's no tomorrow, and there isn't for one of these teams. We have 20 minutes to play. The third period coming up. The Peterborough Peets 2, the St. Michael's Majors 2. The series is tied 3-3. We'll declare a winner sometime tonight. With the call of the third period, back upstairs, Tim Haffey and John Walsh. Thank you, Roger. Throw in a couple more. Do or die. Season hanging by a thread. All or nothing. Winner take all. Well, you often wonder, Tim, if you're a coach in this situation, what do you say to your players between periods? But then you got to think. If you have to say something to your players, why are they here? They know what's at stake. 2-2 is indeed the score. 20 minutes of hockey to go. Possibly 20 minutes of hockey, possibly more. Dave Cameron. We're underway here in the third period at St. Michael's College School Arena. Puck sliding into Majors territory. Popovic will touch. Not enough for icing as Popovic will lead the rush. For Mike Goff, intercepted by Eric Stahl. Popovic gets it back. Trying to keep it away from Stahl. Stahl forces a turnover, and here's Brian Self shooting, but Goff got in the way. Now Popovic for Lukas. Lukas lifts it to the line, gloved down by Self, but right back there with the mitt was Matty Ellis. Lukas Krychek, bouncing puck, cross ice for Karkner. Dangerous return pass for Krychek as Ellis forces a steal. Lukas puts it in front, but Eric Stahl back in the play. Mike Goff had drifted back high in the slot. Puck clear down the ice as the Peets will be called on the icing with 55 seconds having transpired in this third period. Well, nice little play by Lukas getting the puck and just reversing it. As he's going around one way, he reverses it. Unfortunately, there was no major there to pick up the puck. Unfortunately for the majors, but fortunate for the Peterborough Peets. Joey McDonald, the native of Picto, Nova Scotia, the overage veteran, free agent. Could very well get some NHL training camp invites after his performance in this series. Walsh wins the draw for Drew. Fata the wrist shot, and McDonald again there to knock it down. Fata will chase it out to center. Steers it away from Chamberlain for Ryan Walsh. Walsh works some room, but play with the down in the neutral zone. 107 to go. A 107 into this third period. Well, you're right about the uh, invite that Joey McDonald might get, because we have certainly seen enough scouts in this building in this series. Night after night, they're gathered here, checking out the talent that's available for both teams. I think they had to order extra pizza pies for this game, John, for the scouts room, the scout media room. St. Michael's buzzers dressing room has been the scout media room for the playoffs. They've needed all that space. But that dressing room affords. Ryan Walsh will lead the rush. Gains the line. Drop for Brent. But the puck escapes to center and Tyler Cook for Fata. He'll send it back in on a delayed offside. NHL draft coming up in June. Several ranked players in this game. Pavlik, Fata, Krychek, all ranked top 20. Marcel Rodman, the 19-year-old, ranked this time around. Frankie Lucas. Rank number 112, and the two goaltenders, Kyoto and Budai, for the major. Krychek and Popovic, both playing in the CHL top prospects game this year. And there's the Team Canada bronze medal winner. One of Stan Butler's 
top four defensemen in that tournament. Saw a lot of ice in the bronze medal game all the way through the tournament. Team Canada counting on Popovic to play a, a major role in the national team again next year. And word around the OHL and the NHL is that Popovic is pretty much a lock to be an NHL first round pick in June. Here's Maddie Bannon takes the hit from Greg Chambers along the boards. Well, there's a lot of controversy going on about the future of this team and the whereabouts and everything else, but you, know, you did mention one thing, the St. Michael's Buzzers dressing room. Although the actual room is relatively new, it's a bit of a shrine to the St. Michael's Buzzers hockey club that has been going on for, well, almost as long as the majors. You know, well-kept room there. If you notice on the uh, walls, there's a lot of pictures and um, names that are posted of players that have gone on, some of the big, more famous ones, the Kellys, the Duffs, the Keons, uh, you know, a lot of the names that have gone on to notoriety in the NHL and college ranks. Uh, Tom Polonic, one of the greats that used to play here on Friday nights. Friday night was Tom Polonic night with the buzzers. So the story goes. Well, the heating ducts in the room, um, all the uh, buzzers players that moved on to NCAA and CIAU and professional programs. Their names are all listed. The year they graduated, the historic history of the buzzers. And I'll throw in a plug for the family. A couple of my cousins, first cousins, Danny and Joe, were both captains of that team in the 70s. Their pictures are on the wall uh, with their teams in the, uh, what do you call the bar here, John? That's where the pictures are. The, the bar at the end of the rink. <laughs> well, it's actually the Order of St. Michael's Lounge. All right. <laughs> and that bar is jam-packed tonight. The, uh, the overflow gathered in there. Those that are having trouble finding a good standing room vantage point are crammed into the bar. Those have the advantage of being licensed and they have the game on the tube in there so everyone's getting a view of the proceedings. There's the bar there. It's just a, that's the entrance to the establishment. And there are the pictures of some of the uh, players that have gone on from St. Michael's hockey notoriety to the NHL on the Wall of Fame. Actually, you know, Tim, while we're talking about there's a football wall of fame inside that bar, the Jack Fenn football wall of fame, named after one of the great players, teachers, and coaches at St. Michael's. You're part of the football history of this school as well, John, as Adam DeLue will chase down out of the loose pocket center. Now it's cleared back into St. Mike's territory. 17-29 to go in the third period. We can hardly hear ourselves think, let alone speak. Plenty of noise in this famous little rink at St. Clair and Bathurst in downtown Toronto. Ahead for Adam DeLue. Takes it wide on Curtis Foster. The two veterans are working in the corner. Ryan Walsh, another veteran in there. Foster wins the battle, but stepping up with the play was Boudlin. Here's Walsh looking for Boudlin. Throws it in front. McDonald will glove it. Well, they're trying from all angles, getting a little frustrated, coming head on. They're starting to come from behind and everywhere else. But Joey McDonald is holding the fort for the Peterborough Peets. Great support shown by the Peterborough fans. You know, they've come out in droves here. And, you know, they had to cut off ticket sales earlier for fear of not allowing some of the walk-up crowd. Great effort on their part to support their team. And, you know, Tim, we got a lot of St. Mike students here, but I've heard more noise in the chapel some days. <laughs> Shot by Bannon nearly found its way through. Here's Matt Hernison down the right wing. Two on one shot, a key out of the save. Chamberlain chasing the rebound. Now another shot, whistles wide. Here's Wood stepping up into the corner it goes. And there's Keanu sprawling for the loose puck. One, Pete was celebrating a goal. Chamberlain had his stick in the air and Bannon down the right wing for Tim Brandt. Poke check by Wood. Bannon gloves it over the line. Brent with the wrist shot, knocked down in front. And again, McDonald will cover up. I thought I heard our producer, Don Jackson, attempting to give us some attendance numbers. And well, the numbers that we have here is 1,617 patrons have crossed the, the threshold of this arena. Good scoring opportunity by uh, Hernison. 
That's the one where you say we had the sticks in the air, but nonetheless, Tim, the red light did not go on. Well, that is the biggest crowd at St. Michael's Arena this year. Of course, the majors' top attendance has been at the Air Canada Center this year, where they routinely pulled in anywhere between four, six, seven thousand. As Tim Reynolds tries to jam it in on the short side, and now Reynolds at center ice. I didn't know you could get 1,617 people in this building, John. Well, <laughs> to be honest with you, Tim, neither did I. I thought it was somewhere around 12 and maybe 13, but. Well, they did, as you say, cut off ticket sales, so they calculated the maximum and then pulled it back. Well, now keep in mind, Tim, that you mentioned the lounge or the Order of St. Michael Hall, and that'll hold a couple, uh, which really aren't included in the seating of this building. Well, there was that famous Junior B game here about 10 years ago when Eric Lindros played there we for go, the, Tim. the buzzers. Yeah, those are the uh, the older fans. There's the fans that, we've been not, looking not for. Not the young guys you were talking about earlier. Those are the high school students, I would imagine. Yep, that is them. Well, that Junior B game, a uh, famous game about 10 years ago, it got so rowdy in here, the buzzers and whoever they happen to be playing. I didn't see this game. I just, just hear the story. It's a legend, but... That's so crazy, he had to kick all the fans out of the rink. There's a shot for the point. Parker letting it go, Kyoto will cover up. Put policemen on each bench, and the uh, two teams play to an empty house. It got so crazy. Well, you know, again, a lot of things have gone on at this arena. You know, from jam-packed houses to, as you say, empty stands. Whoever bumping Eric Lindros, uh, I'll have to ask him about that game. I've heard several first-hand accounts of that game. It was just nuts in here. Uh, very tense atmosphere. Police figure the only way to prevent something crazy happening was to just evacuate. <laughs> Can you imagine being the one that would have to tell him, you're out? Here's Matty Ellis winning the draw. Popovic. Plenty of security and peace officers of this game. Pete's fans have been enthusiastic but well behaved. Same with the major fans. Absolutely, Tim. You know, they are a great bunch of fans. And as you say, very well behaved. Chance for Matty Ellis in front. Klein with the turnaround shot. Here's Goff into the corner. Goff bumping with Kark here. Now the Pete's clear the zone. We're five minutes deep into this third period. Mark Popovic under pressure. Mark Popovic, the steady two-way captain of the majors. Adam Elzinga puts it wide. Here's Brad Self turning and shooting. That puck was knocked down in front. Self had a couple of targets for the redirect in front of the net. Brad Self, a good, heady, creative offensive player. Eric Stahl stretching for that loose puck. Kevin Klein, the underage rookie, will lead the rush. Remarkable poise for this rookie. Oh, he had no one to scoop up that drop. Here's John Brielle. His drop works for one with the shot at Kyoto. Very steady. And the Majors goal will squeeze the pads on that shot. I'll tell you, Tim, from the between the dots in the Majors zone to the blue light of the Peterborough Peets, that kid looked all pro. Unfortunately, he left the puck in the blue line. Kevin Klein, a great effort on his part. Here we see the... Uh, I don't think it's a safe play. No, it's a shot on Andy Kyoto. But he does a smart thing, it just smothers it up. Well, that was the return rush, and John, the Majors defense looks like it will be pretty mobile next year. They should get Mark Popovic back for one more year. Drew Fata, Kevin Klein. All three look like they have very significant NHL upside. Popovic and Fata already ranked very high for the upcoming draft. Klein's a late 84. The scouts will not get a crack at him until his third year, 2003. Chamberlain lets it go. And Kyoto, another save. Here's Timmy Brent. He'll lead the rush. For Bannon, and Bannon crunched. Plunkett gets a shot off as Bannon was hammered. Took one for the team, Matty Bannon. Now Bannon takes it over the blue line, goes wide on Foster, puts it in front for Plunkett. Play broken up. 
And John Brio sends it off the boards and down the ice. Well, it just seems to be a series of calamities in each other's zone. You know, the majors get in their zone, and what do they do? They cough it up a few times. Peterborough really can't take advantage of those situations. Can we see the same thing in the Peterborough zone? You know, the majors are in there. They have possession of it frequently, but then, you know, Peterborough steals it. They cough it up. The only real good scoring opportunity is right there by Lindsey Plunkett, who then banks it off one of the Peets. There's a crunch on Matty Bannon. You know, we got to think back of about a little over a month ago when he took one from, I believe it was Kurt Foster that kept him out for about three weeks with a concussion. Very similar to that. Well, in that sequence, we saw Chamberlain take out Bannon. It looked like Foster threw an elbow as well behind the play on Timmy Brent. Here's Matty Armstrong down the left wing. 2-2 the score. He bumps with Masita. Greg Chambers in the corner for Armstrong. Back of the net, taken out by Reynolds. There's Boucher, gives it away. Now Dustin Wood with a wrist shot. Keanu is saved. And Chambers into the corner. Boucher takes it back of the net. Finds some room. Boucher will skate in the center. Older brother Brock. Played briefly for majors two years ago. Brock Boucher coming over from Barry. And younger brother Chris's rookie season is Matt Armstrong. And Kyoto the save on the former Kitchener Rangers. Armstrong heads to the bench. Masita finds Delu, who is stationary. Feeds it to the line. Adam Elzinga will lead the rush. Kevin Klein intercepted by Marcel Rodman. Here's Rodman with room back of the net. Or Klein check and Kyoto knocks it down. Huge save by Kyoto on Lucas Krychek. Ryan Walsh back the other way. Krychek with a poke. The Lou. Checked up along the boards. Fata will keep it in. Got caught up with the Lou. Now Drew Fata. Ahead for Bootlin. Kicked up by Krychek. Two and one with Rodman. Here's Krychek. Shot. Kyoto. Robbing Lucas Krychek. The two imports, Krychek and Rodman, two on one on Andy Kyoto. Well, Tim, we got to say that Krychek's been the game so far. We look at the plays that he's had, and all of a sudden this play coming up right here. But hey, maybe Andy Kyoto just stole the momentum for him. Look at him holding up that puck like a prize. Hey, he knows what that's worth. We see him coming down here again. Very similar to Daryl Boothman's effort earlier on McDonald. He's looking for that corner. That's all he's looking for. Andy Kyoto just takes it out of his view. Right check rank number 16 by NHL Central Scouting and Kyoto number six among goalies. Bamming down the left wing. Cuts it to the middle of the draw, pluck it, shoot it, McDonald the save! Pluck it and ban it on the crisscross. And Joey McDonald, another steady save in that peach cage. Well, Matty Bannon is taking him for the team now. He's just, you know, driving the net after Lindsey Plunkett's shot. Great setup by Matt Bannon, dropping it off to Plunkett. Hey, who are you gonna drop it off to? The veteran who has a little bit of a touch this playoff series. He does that nice little drop off there. Foster follows him. Wood just doesn't get into the crisscross. Big fat rebound opening up. But Foster's got him all tangled up, but he doesn't allow Bannon the opportunity. Giving him a little bit of a rough ride along the way. Without big Kurt Foster there, you know, Majors John, could possibly go ahead. John, I thought the Majors had an edge in play through the first five games of this series, but not so in the last two. The Peets have caught up with him. This has been even Steven for the last couple of games. Reynolds puts the shot on goal. Here's Adam Elzinga for Armstrong. Reynolds kicks it ahead. Peets clear the zone. Back in the same ice territory. And Chris Boucher will touch in the icing. 11.20 to go. 2-2 to score. Well, both goalies are making some great saves here, Tim. And, you know, seventh game. 10, a little over 10 minutes to go, score tied. 
know, sometimes you wonder, how's that goal going to be scored? Is it going to be a blast? Is it going to be a, you know, a nice deke on the goalie or whatever? You know, unfortunately, sometimes they bounce off skates. John, this game not only being seen in our, our regular Toronto Scarborough viewing area, but also in Ottawa and Oshawa. The only first round playoff series to go beyond five games. Plunk it off the draw and McDonald will cover up. Brian Kilray certainly had that 67s team prepared for the playoffs. I thought North Bay might even potentially upset Ottawa as North Bay seemed to have developed a good skating game towards the end of the year. Certainly a lot of speed on that team and world junior goaltending Alex Ald, but Kilray in the 67s prevailed, sweeping in four straight. Ottawa were favored to win that series, but they were by no means heavy favorites. Matty Ellis will take the draw against Eric Stahl. Eric Stahl, the brilliant young rookie from Thunder Bay. Popovic will keep it in at the point. Karkner with a little head fake on Ellis. Karkner's a big bruising D, but he's got some moves as well. Montreal Canadiens second round pick. The Habs would dearly love to side Karkner. He spurned their first offer last year. Habs control his rights till June. They can't do a deal. Karkner, I think, will be a much sought after free agent. He could very well go that route. In fact, I suspect that's why he returned to the OHL for a overage season. Puck cleared around on the boards. Beats Eric Stahl, keeps it in. Eric Stahl, certainly will be one of the premier players in this league over the next three years. Got the height, he's got the size, he's got the hands, and he's got the heart. Brad Self, he'll fake, dishes off for Stahl. Here's Stahl cutting it at the backhand, and Kyoto was there. Now Tyler Cook has Stahl pinned up against the boards. Eric Stahl, first round, 13th overall pick of the Peets last year. Timmy Brand of the Majors going second in the same draft. Mike Goff. Fires it into the corner. Walsh up in the four check. Elzinga steps it around Walsh. And he finds John Briot down the off wing. Briot trying to drag it around Fata. We've been talking about the St. Mike's buzzers. Fata, a graduate of that buzzers program from last year. Now he banned another former buzzer playing for the majors. Drew Fata. Majors drafted player Phil Turi playing on the Buzzers defense this year. Could step up next year. Should be a, at least a couple of openings in the Majors blue line next year. Daryl Boodlin. Pass to an open wing. 9-11 to go in the third period. Curtis Foster. Rink wide for Matt Hernizing. Now for Chris Boucher. Paul Dennis, a head, uh, coach with the Toronto Maple Leafs, has sent Steve and for the last two years with buzzers. Here's Matt Armstrong shooting, and the shot was blocked. Steven telling us he'll be going to the NCAA route next year after a couple of years in Tier 2 with the buzzers. Duluth chasing into the corner, and a whistle on the play with 8.40 to go in the third period. Well, one of the major quiet performers here this evening has been Chris Boucher. We talked about it in the first goal, how he just lofted one. Second goal where he created the decoy. And there he just prevented Mark, Matt Armstrong from getting a clear shot on net. Ryan Walsh, Adam DeLue, and Lindsey Plunkett all playing in this game and potentially their last OHL game. They are indeed overagers. Phil Wackos moved on to the East Coast Hockey League this year. Played briefly for the majors early in the year. Luckett ultimately replacing Lacos as the Majors third overage. Rio, Karkner, and McDonald, the three 20-year-olds for Peterborough. Daniel will take the draw for Peterborough against Lauren Masita. Masita wins the draw. Delu will send it high and down the ice. Karkner with Bannon on the forecheck. Here's Masita. Masita checked up by Wood. Bannon continues the puck pursuit. Now Delu bumps off Armstrong. Masita. Whipped up by Wood. Bannon continues to fight. Jimmy Gagnon in there as well. Masita to the loose puck. Thought about the wraparound. Now try the wrist shot, but 
That wall that is Joey McDonald was firmly in place. Well, Lord Messina found him in a position, and all of a sudden he says, hey, what do I do here? Didn't really expect to be that wide open in front of the net, but took the opportunity and put it high in Joey McDonald, who rose to the challenge. So Dave Cameron, the fourth head coach of the majors, succeeding the original Mark Napier, who was followed by Mike Feuda, Mark Osborne, Dave Cameron, the third former NHLer to patrol the majors bench. Tim Brent, Eric Stahl. Two top underage OHL players in the draw. Walsh pinned up a little against the boards by Krychek. Brian Self has lost his helmet. Well, lost his helmet, lost his stick. You know, John, the Toronto Rock in action against the Rochester Nighthawks tonight at the Air Canada Center, and future Nighthawk playing in this game. They want to get a shot of him. He's on the ice now, wearing number 11 for St. Mike's. Brad Self, pretty good lacrosse player in his own right. Lindsey Plunkett, I'm talking about, wearing number 11 for the Majors, has signed with the Rochester Nighthawks. So when his OHL season is done, he'll continue on in the NLLL. It's just uh, not quite in your screen. He's on the right wing, lined up in front of Marcel Rodman. As Popovic gets the shot right off the faceoff, and here's Plunkett into the corner for Brent. Brent back of the net, working with Ryan Walsh. Here's Brent curling it in front and getting a wrist shot on goal. Now again for Brent along the board. Stahl intercepts ahead for Rodman. Rodman working with self. Majors break it up. Here's Brent and Stahl bumping. The two rookies continue their battle along the boards. Now Rodman trying to muscle it around Popovic. Popovic knocked him on his can and Lindsey Pluckett. And Plunkett has self-stick caught up. Brychek, the smooth skating Czech blue liner. They're working at the center. Now John Brio steps up. Here's Drew Fada. 7.07 to go in the third period. Pizza Majors deadlocked at two. Fada for Lukas. Lukas almost caught the hip from John Brio, but Brio did enough to hold him up. And there's a heavy hit as Lukas stepped into Hernizen. Hernizen stick, fired away with disdain. The jolt knocked it loose. Cartner works at the center. Finds Brio down the left wing. Sends the back end wide. Lucas with the head fake. Now Lucas sends it out to center. Elzinga. Now Chamberlain Cook collide. Back for Elzinga for Karkner. Karkner off the glass. Fada steers it away from Chamberlain. The spin move for Ellis. Ellis with Bannon in traffic. Ellis goes to the net. Now he's into the corner. Wood has Bannon pinned up against the boards. Ellis digging for the puck. Stall with him. The rookie clears it away. And into the other corner it goes. Lucas and Elzinga. Now Brad Self along the boards. Lucas continues to fight, but Elzinga comes up with it. Ahead for Dustin Wood. He'll flip it on goal. Kyoto will hang on. 5.54 to go in the period. Well, it's evident that the referee has put away the whistle for the uh, latter part of this game. You know, there have only been a few things that might even be called minor infractions, but it's good to see that he's letting the players play the game and decide the outcome of it. Unless there's something major that you know, has to be called, I think he's just going to let it go. Very determined-looking Mark Pavlik certainly has had the game face on for this entire series. Quite a year for the young man from Stony Creek. Playing at the World Juniors, getting his first taste of OHL playoff action. His profile has certainly blossomed this year. In his third OHL season. Mesita will take the draw. Against Stephen Hoare. Beats control, shot right of the draw by Greg Chambers. Should have been covered. But Kyoto with the toe save. The toe save, and as he's scooping it in, you know, we see here, nice opportunity on the faceoff. Uh, Stephen Hort wins the faceoff. Just a very quick shot that Andy Kyoto happens to catch sight of. 
Greg Chambers, the 18-year-old rookie leading scorer with a mark of Waxers Tier 2 last year. The Waxers sporting the Marlboro uniforms. That famous uniform that played in this league for so long. Here's Matty Bannon taking it wide and puts the wrist shot on goal. Now Boucher. Red Chambers down the right wing to the middle in front with Bannon there to scoop up the loose puck. Ahead for Adam DeLue. The Marlies leaving Toronto in 89. The Majors returning Major Junior Hockey to downtown Toronto in 97. Curtis Foster. Although Dennis Cook has the bid in to purchase this team and more than likely move them to Cornwall, there are at least two very significant bids that are determined to keep this team here in Toronto. Speaking of Cook, we love you, Cook. I think that's Tyler Cook and family. I would think so. I would hope so. I don't know, Tim, seeing this team in Cornwall, I don't know anything more than the average fan about what is going on here, but I I tend to think that's just a, just a rumor. I don't think it'll be in Cornwall. Well, it's, it, all it is at this point is a scenario, is there's a shot wide. There are two scenarios. They're very simple, as shot by Brio is blocked. Well, how about this? It's a scenario that's not going to happen. I don't that, think. That, <laughs> yeah, there's any number of connected people that are would agree with that assessment. Here's Cartner, back of the net. Ryan Walsh throws it in front, but the Pete said everyone covered. Here's Tyler Cook along the boards. And play whistle down with 4.35 to go in this third period. Dave Cameron, Bobby Jones, coached together in Sault Ste. Marie, reunited here in Toronto. Well, we're starting to see a little bit of emotion in Dave Cameron. You know, you look over the bench and you always see emotion in Bobby Jones. And Dave is basically just a stable one, you know, doesn't get excited about anything, just lets the flow of the play go. But hey, with five minutes to go in this game, he's getting a little excited. Head coaches rely on their trusted lieutenant, Bobby Jones, assisting Dave Cameron. We saw Mark Napier recruited Mike Feud as his assistant coach three years ago. Mark Osborne brought in his own crew. Ken Southwick and Timmy Armstrong, the former Maple Leaf. Frank Lucas with the steal, the run shot! And McDonald again there to deny the Majors, Frank Lucas. Ellis bumps with Eric Stahl, Pete's cleared out to center. Here's Lucas. For Kevin Klein. Elzinga breaks it up with the line for Rodman. Kyoto. For Kevin Klein. Mike Goff. Fires it deep. McDonald will leave it for Wood. 3.42 to go in the period. Ahead for Matt Armstrong. Stephen Hoare wrists it into St. Mike's territory. Drew Fata back behind the net. Battle with that famous fat of speed. Rico and Drew. In the Peterborough territory. McDonald sends it around to the board. Bannon fighting for the puck. Here's a chance. We see a shot. And Cartner blocks it. Now Bannon trying to stuff it in. And McDonald will fall on the loose puck. Well, Lord Messina, he's been one to be a game breaker on certain uh, games. You know, just stealing pucks like that, putting them home. But this time, he just couldn't put it past McDonald. Puts it into the back of the net. Sorry, put, puts it around behind the back of the net. Bannon picks it up and tries to stuff it in here. And Joey McDonald again rises to the challenge to smother the puck. Good opportunity for Lord Messina. The puck just pops up, and you know, as we say, occasionally he's put those home. 3.17 to go in the third period. Walsh and Brio, the two overages on the draw. Both four years with their respective teams as Brio fights it out to center. Darrell Boodland and Walsh continue the battle along the boards and Kartner steps into Walsh. Now Walsh will drag it over the line. 
Lindsey Plunkett just stayed on side. Cleveland bumping with Cartney. Now the Peets clear it out. 2.55 to go. Back for Fata. Stumbled. Recovered. Quick running interference on Chamberlain. Little pick play, as you might say in football circles, John. Try check will touch. Majors called on the ice. Well, you're right. A little bit of a pick play just to get just enough to agitate. You know, you know, John, I asked uh, GM Jeff Tui about Krychek's status for this game because at the beginning of the series, we were told they'd have him for Game 6, but the check under 18 team might grab him for Game 7. And you now Jeff really couldn't give me a straight answer. He said, we'll just see if he turns up for the warm-up, and he did. So something got sorted out in the... Unfortunately for the Peets, he did because it involved with both goals and a number of scoring opportunities. Timmy Brent will face off against Eric Stahl. And right off the draw for Matty Ellis. Ellis for Goff, what will be called on the offside. Well, we know one thing, Krychek did not want to go. He was resisting that move with a check under 18, 18 team for all he was worth. Checks have the leverage though, that's part of the uh, deal they have with the CHL, these under 18s, so the 17 year olds, they can yank them at this time of year for the for the World Championships. Canada does not participate in that tournament because of the uh, horrible timing vis-a-vis -vis the CHL playoffs. Here's Brad Self. Well, sometimes negotiation is tough, Tim, and you've got to give a little in. I guess the upside of that is that they had him all season and they got this far with him. Eric Stahl. And Kyoto will cover up. Now when you consider it's a game seven, really you can't expect Jeff Tui to be <laughs> terribly forthcoming on anything in the hour and a half prior to a game. Uh, GMs and coaches, no matter how well they know you, will not reveal any injury information at this time of year. Well, Tim, I was actually privy to that conversation, and I was just sitting on the, I should say privy, but I was just on the outside watching it, and I noticed how he was being evasive with you, but you were beating that junkyard dog, and you wouldn't let him go. But, but there was nowhere to go. <laughs> Came at him from every angle, but he wouldn't bite on it. Well, I give both of you credit. Yeah, we were jousting a little bit there. But it's a dance the media and coaches and GMs play at this time of year at all levels. And a shot into the corner. Steered aside as Elzinga let that one go. Suffice to say, Lucas Krychek is indeed playing in this game and playing a big role. Here's Matt Cartman. Greg Chambers. Battling along the boards with Adam Galoo. 150 to go in the third period. T.J. Reynolds for Stephen Hoare. Looking for Chamberlain, Deleu steps up, he'll fire it into the corner. Now for Elzinga. Reynolds. Elzinga, back of the net. Nasida, looking to lead Deleu. Reynolds, covered by Hernandez, and now Deleu has a little bit of room. Centering in front, bang, covered by Kartner. Matty Kartner had no idea where the puck was, but he knew his job was to cover Matt Bannon, and good thing he did. Well, you can see the look in Matt Bannon's eyes. He's got that desire to get the puck, and all he's focusing on is, is the puck. Good move on Kartner's part. Don't look around for the puck. Look at Bannon's eyes. They're going to take it right to the puck. So Matt Kartner on Matt Bannon. How many Matts did we say were in this series, John? Few too many for the announcers. Six, I think. Three per side. We'll leave that to the viewers. There could be a <laughs> little uh, trivia challenge there. We've thrown out all six names plenty of times in this game. Maybe we can sort them out. Three mats in each team. Here's Lindsey Plunkett ahead for Darrell Boone. One minute to go in the third period. Lindsey Plunkett hops it over the line. Ryan Walsh as Brielle moves to Walsh. Walsh still in possession. Back of the net. McDonald. Stretched across that goal line. Now Walsh still in the corner. Looking for Boodlin. 
as Foster picks it up, lead pass, Fata stepping up to intercept, now Hernizen for Chamberlain. Chamberlain trying to establish puck possession, comes for Bootlin. Fata knocks his man down, Walsh working along the boards. Here's Eric Stahl, the rookie, trying to poke it loose, but the Majors send it forward, 25 seconds to go. Adam Elzinga for Dustin Wood. Now for Brad Self at center. Chance here for Rodman. Rodman to the net. And Keanu the save. Kevin Klein will save as well. Ten seconds to go. Klein leads the rush. Here's Klein. Rex Sean McDonald. They charge it in. They try to stuff it in. No goal. As Mike Goff was there for the majors. Matty Ellis as well. The net upended. 0.9 seconds remaining. Well, when you think of what what you would want as a coach. If you're the Peterborough coach, you'd want a matchup of a skilled player like Rodman against a rookie defenseman such as Kevin Klein. If we look at, you know, just previous to this, that's the matchup he had. That Rodman against Kevin Klein, but hey, that guy's a trooper, Kevin Klein. He's just stuffed Rodman, then takes off down the ice for the scoring opportunity for about seven seconds left to go. Here we see Kevin Klein just holding, holding, holding. He's not letting Rodman go. Finally, he ties him up enough, catches the puck. He's down the ice for the scoring opportunity. Just some absolutely tenacious defensive zone coverage. Kevin Klein turned 16 December 13th, the youngest player in the OHL, playing like a seasoned veteran. And back at the other end, Matt Carkner ferociously defending the crease area. Less than a second ago. We would appear to be heading to game seven, sudden death overtime. And it is indeed sudden death, John. None I'll tell you, if we get a uh, picture of the uh, Majors coaches over there, what else do they have to do to win this game? Well, Ellis, battling with self on the faceoff. After three periods of play, the Peets and the Majors have decided absolutely nothing, a scoreless third period. 2-2 two, two the score. This Eastern Conference OHL quarterfinal will be decided in Game 7, sudden death overtime here at St. Michael's College School Arena. 2-2 two, two the score. Roger Lajoie standing by. Well, regulation time settled nothing, and this best of seven opening round series between the Peterborough Peets and the St. Michael's Majors will come down to one shot, one goal in overtime. Sudden death overtime is coming up. 2 2, the Peets and the Majors tied after regulation time, tied 3 3 in this best of seven series, and what a great way to end this series. Tough to take if you're a fan of one of the two teams, but what a great hockey game tonight we're seeing at St. Michael's College School Arena. Brian Simpson in studio with us now. Brian is a former St. Michael's major, now at the University of Toronto. Another good example of life after junior hockey, how it continues, and a lot of guys do well. Brian, it's great to see you again, and uh, nice to see you back in this building. What's it like watching uh, some of your former teammates out there? It's different. You know, it's kind of tough. You get a lot of emotions. You, like, it's only been one season since I've played in this building, and, you know, just kind of you see it out there I got here just at the beginning of the first period and just you know feel like you just want to lace up the skates and get out there and start playing with all the guys and you know I'm still really good friends with many guys on the team and talk to them all all the time and you know it's tough my, my emotions out there with all the guys on the team. Brian uh, what's it been like for at the University of Toronto of course you know we hear from players who uh, move on uh, move up to the NHL ranks or they go on to other facets of life but you've managed to combine moving on getting an education and playing hockey with a pretty good hockey club ninth ranked team in the country must be doing all right yeah it's 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 a tough adjustment to make going from the OHL up to the CIAU but you know many players have done it and I have a couple friends on the team that have done it themselves and you know I think it starts off a little bit rock and a little bit tough. It's a different style of hockey, which is going to be the difference. But, you know, overall, we're doing really well. We have a really good team, really young team. And, you know, there's only a bright future ahead of us. So, What's it like for you playing in that league with a lot of other former CHL players? I think in the entire CA, you, you mentioned there's only a couple of players on your team that are, had St. Mike's experience. But uh, there's, I think there's 330 players in the CIU played somewhere in the Canadian Hockey League. So, you know, it's a pretty high level of play, isn't it? It is. Like, you see guys out there, you know, from playing in the OHL and then going there, 
you don't realize it at first, but once you start playing all the teams, you notice guys that you've played against in the past in the OHL and around the league like that. And like, there's a really, there's a lot of good young players in there. There's a couple goaltenders from Troy Riviere that, you know, they're probably going to sign in the NHL this year. And, you know, the list goes on and on of people that have played in the CHL that are now playing in the university league. What's it like at U of T academically for you? I know going to St. Mike's, of course, is quite an experience. Playing in the OHL is demanding, trying to juggle academics, you know, so you can qualify to go to university and manage to play junior hockey. But now you're back in a little different thing. Of course, education is, is the focus there, but CIAU, even though it's not an OHL schedule, is still fairly demanding. What's that been like for you? It is. Well, it's the same demanding as the OHL. You know, we still practice every day We're on the ice six or seven times a week. And, you know, the, the big difference now is school is more in the forefront than it was playing in the OHL. And, you know, that's, gonna, that's the way it's going to be. I'm just moving on another stage in my life now. Hockey is still very important to me, but, you know, school is also very important now also. And, you know, along with that just comes the time of adjustment. You know, you start off, you may be a little bit rocky early on, like last year was a little bit tough for me. And, you know, as long as you keep trying to improve, then that's the big difference. What are you taking uh, at the U of T? And uh, we talked off air, you know, you have a general arts program, but anything in particular strike your interest or you're right now just getting your feet wet in university life? I think right now I'm still trying to adjust. It's... Really, it's, it's tough to do. Like, I didn't realize that at first, but not only being able to do well in your classes, but also trying to enjoy the classes is a big difference. So as of right now, you know, I'm just taking my calculus and poli sci and English class and just trying to feel out the university and the different kind of programs that I can get into. Well, Brian, it's great to see a former player doing well, going to university and combining education and hockey, continuing at the university level. Best of luck to you and enjoy the overtime with the rest of us tonight. Thank you very much. That's Brian Simpson, former major and U of T Blue. It's 2-2. We're in overtime. We're going to take a short break, but don't go away. Tim and John will be back with their analysis of what we've seen over the first 60 minutes. And still to come, overtime. Who wins this series? We'll find out shortly. This is OHL Primetime. On Well, it's not just St. Michael's fans in the stands tonight. There are a lot of fans from Peterborough. You see some of them there. They're carrying the Pete's banners, and they're hoping the Peterborough Pete's can find a way to win this one. Majority of the crowd, though, is still St. Mike's fans and all fans, whether you're Pete's or Majors, are deep down enjoying this one, but it's a tough one if you're a fan of either team. Great hockey game tonight. What a way to finish a series. Overtime, Game 7. Doesn't matter what the league, what the level. Overtime in Game 7 is the best way to end a series. One shot's going to end this series. When? We'll find out. Overtime is coming up next. And, of course, the OHL is sudden death overtime. We play till somebody scores. And it's five-on-five five hockey, unlike the regular season, folks. It's not four-on-four. Five-on-five five right from the start. We saw how ten of both teams were in that third period. I'm sure we're in for a great and very tense overtime. It's coming up. So don't go away. 2-2, the Peets and the Majors. Series tied 3-3. Let's take a look at the Max Milk scoring summary of the third period. And the Max Milk scoring summary of the third period is pretty short. There was no scoring. Shots on goal in the game favor the Majors. 32 to 31, so they've been dead even on the shots clock, dead even on the scoreboard, and dead even in the series, tied 3-3. That's why we're going overtime, and that's why we need at least an extra 20 minutes tonight, and we'll see when this one finally wraps up. Now, if the majors do move on, and it's a big if, but we've got to look ahead. Game one, believe it or not, they want to get this one over with quickly because they got to be in Sudbury tomorrow night at 7.30 if they do win tonight. That's game one of the series against the Wolves. Game two will be back here at St. Michael's College School Arena Sunday, April the 8th at 1.30 p.m. Tickets will be on sale immediately if the majors do go on. That's game two Sunday here at St. Mike's. The series will continue Tuesday, April the 10th, 7.30 in Sudbury with game three. And game four Thursday, April the 12th at 7.30. But not to jinx the majors. they got to win in overtime first before we move on. Peterborough, by the way, if they would win the series are off to Belleville, and that series is already set. It opens up Saturday night in Belleville. So the teams know the dates. They know the times. They just don't know who is going where. Well, overtime is coming up with their thoughts on what's transpired so far. Let's go back upstairs. Tim Haffey and John Walsh. Thank you, Roger. Well, John, goaltending has played a big part in this series. Just one guy for the Peets, Joey McDonald. Both Peter Budai and Andy Kyoto have been very strong for the St. Mike's Majors. Our plays of the period for that third period, no goals obviously, but we are going to look at a couple of close calls at either end of the rink. Well, close call here, I believe the first one we're going to see is the save by Andy Kyoto. I mean, he's got Rodman bearing down on him. You know, you see, you just see the look in his eye. He knows what he's going to do. What is Andy Kyoto? I'm sorry, not Rodman, but Krychek. Krychek bearing down on him. 
Andy Kiyota, you can just see the leap of joy in him. Now, he doesn't want to admit that, but, hey, he's got that puck. Maybe a little bit of question in his mind if that was going to happen. Here we go, see another play where one of the Peterborough players almost puts it into his own net. Stahl goes up to grab it, just, you know, catches it on the tip of his finger or something. It comes down and surprises Joey McDonald. <laughs> and the major who's sitting right there. You got to so, be prepared for those things when they happen. Yeah. <laughs> Joey McDonald fortunate in that play. A goaltending again, uh, big, very big in this oh, series. Oh, it's huge in this series. Yeah, huge. Well, Joey McDonald, we knew he was a steady goalie, a well-respected goalie, but maybe his uh, finest hours in this playoff series. Let's go back to Roger. Thanks very much, Tim and John. Well, it's going to be a tension-filled overtime period coming up, and you're absolutely right about the goaltending in the series. The big players have been the big players, and really, ever since Game 5, when the Peets were down 3 nothing and came back, what a series we've had. Nothing is decided. We've got overtime coming up, so don't go away. The Peterborough Peets 2, the St. Michael's Majors 2. After a short break, we return to St. Michael's College School Arena, and we find out who is going to the second round of the OHL playoffs and who is going home. Overtime is next on OHL Primetime. You're watching Rogers Television. Six games and three periods have settled nothing in this best of seven series. We need an overtime. The series is tied 3-3. The hockey game is tied 2-2. The Peets in the St. Michael's Majors, one goal, one shot, wins this hockey game. With the call of the overtime, let's go back upstairs. Tim Haffey and John Walsh. Thank you, Roger. The Modern Major is going to play off overtime for the first time in their four-year rebirth. And it's game seven, series on the line, sudden death overtime. John, this is not the, the gimmicky, goofy bonus point overtime we see in the regular hey, season. Tim, don't hold back there, let it all out. <laughs> this is the real thing. This is playoff, sudden death overtime. Game seven variety, winner advances, loser. Well, well as Roger says, one goal, one shot. Let's hope it's a shot and not a deflection or a no, I should say deflection, but bounce off somebody's foot or something like that. All right, the yeah. two underages on the opening draw. Brenton Stahl. Stahl wins the draw, and here's Karkner across for Krychek. 2-2 the score. Brad Self throws it into the corner. Kyoto will stop it back of an net, leaves it for Popovic. Centering pass caught the side of an net. Here's Tim Brent for the majors. Brent will try and skate it out, finds Mike Goff. Goff intercepted by Brad Self, but the Peets called on the offside. Well, you'd call that a rookie mistake, but he's not a rookie. Fortunately for Mike Guff, you know, Self was a little too eager to get over the line. It was an offside call. But laying it out across the ice like that, not a good move there, Michael. Twenty-seven seconds into the first overtime period. The two veterans will take the draw this time. Walsh and Brio. Brio flanked by Chamberlain and Hernizen. They'll do the draw over. Walsh with Plunkett and Woodland. Plunkett is taking over for Adam Delu in this line, at least for the time being. Drew Fata back of the net. Tyler Cook will take over, finds Plunkett. Down Plunkett momentarily. Now Dustin Wood. Lifts it into St. Mike's territory. Tyler Cook gloves it down. Hernizen up on the four check. Hernizen has Cook tied up. Forces a turnover from Rio. But Fada moves over to cover the veteran. Fada and Brio continue to battle for the puck. Now Ryan Walsh will take over. The Major's leading scorer skates at the center. One shooting! Joey McDonald makes one of those saves that goalies love to pose for. Well, we've seen him from medium range. We've seen him from close in. Ryan Walsh just decided that, hey, maybe a long shot will take him. We have seen Ryan Walsh score from center ice on at least two occasions over his career. He was one of the hardest shooters on the team. Well, his directive at the beginning of the season was shoot, 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 shoot. Coach Cameron just said, hey, you've got a shot. It's a slap shot, a wrist shot, a snapper. Use it. And what he did is he used it this year, and he did it from everywhere. 
Rick Alas, Scotty Bowman, Mike Keenan, Roger Nielsen, Dick Todd, Gary Green, some of the famous names that have preceded Rick Alain behind that famous Peterborough Pete's bench. Laura Messina will take the draw against Stephen Hoare. Messina wins it. Reynolds pounding it just wide. Greg Chambers back for Karkner. 33-31. Shots on goal in favor of the majors. Adam Elzinga will lead the rush. The Let's Go Majors chant resonating throughout the building. I'm sure there's a Go Pete's Go chant going as well, but it's at least temporarily getting drowned out. Elzinga looking for Chambers. Bannon intercepts to make that arm strong. Now back in the net. Parkman chases it down. Carefully moving it ahead for Chambers. He will send it deep. Back down by Masita. DJ Reynolds, long lead pass for Bannon. For Ellis, stepping up in the play is Rodman. Forces it ahead for Stahl. Stahl colliding with Bannon on the play and the Majors send it into Pete's territory. Foster. He'll survey the scene and start the rush. Pass off the boards for Stahl, misses. Goff sends it right back in. McDonald for Foster. All the way back into St. Mike's territory. Kyoto out of the net. Manages to keep it away from Brad Self. Now for Popovic. Ellis collides with his man. Foster letting it go. And Kyoto the save. I think we have to recognize one of the majors has really stepped up his game since he stepped on the ice for the first period. Matt Bannon, I mean, he has given his all to this game here this evening. You know, he's, he's been driven into the net. He's had, you know, been pounded into the boards, been pounded at open ice. He just keeps on going. Walsh, Rodman, Self, and Boodle in the goal scores. The Bulls, the Wolves, and the 67s anxiously awaiting the outcome of this overtime game seven. 17-29 to go. Walsh will take the draw. Walsh and Stahl. Walsh wins, finds Klein. Klein under pressure. Gives it to Popovic for Pluckett. And Pluckett finds room at center. Gains the line. Shot deflects into the corner. Bootland falls up with Klein. Just plug in the shot. And a kick save by Joey McDonald. Now Plunkett centering for Boodle and takes it on the skate. Back in shot, hits the side of the net. Bouncing puck for Plunkett. Finds Boodle. Boodle will cut it in the middle, gets it through, and again McDonald was there. Now Boodle intercepts for Walsh. Plunkett down the left wing, Klein check. Puts the grab on Plunkett. Self off the board, Walsh! Oh, looked like he's gonna lean into that. He broke his stick and he was checked up from behind. Now Bootlin in the corner. Stahl back on the net. Walsh's stick remains in the ice. Messina battling against Karkner. Now Bootlin the rush shot just wide. There's Bacon with a little stick fake. Rycheck has Bacon pinned up against the boards. The league office, the Pete's everyone working to make Lucas Rycheck available for this game. I understand from my intermission investigation that even Dave Branch was involved in Freeing up Krychek for this game as Krychek moves into the line. Here's Drew Fata. Sends it deep. McDonald leaves it for Dustin Wood. Wood will take his time, wrists it off the boards. That's Greg Chambers. Major's Boucher sets it right back. Ellis fans in the shot. Ellis in every shot. With Bannon in front of the net. Armstrong. Long lead pass. He was looking for Chambers. He'll follow up against Boucher. And the Peach will be called in the icing. Good opportunities had by both teams, actually. But the majority of them going to the Majors here, having the Peter Peets in their own zone. Good opportunities. But again, Joey McDonald is stoning him. Greg Chambers, the young man from Toronto. 30 goals, 65 points, leading the Markham Waxers in scoring last year. Coming off his first full season with the Peterborough Peets. 
And thrown into the game seven overtime fire. Joey McDonald, Andy Kyoto, cool under pressure. Face off to McDonald's right. The veterans Walsh and Brio on the draw. Walsh wins cleanly. Four final. He'll skate it into the corner. Throws it through the slot. Lucas got a little bit on that shot. Now Brio checked by Lucas. Turning, plug it. Took a swipe at it. Now the Peets almost had a three on two, but Fata sends it back. Adam Elzinga. Pass behind Chamberlain. Stepping up was Tyler Cook. Lucas Elzinga. These young hockey players, many of them, most of them, in the most pressure packed moment of their young careers. Brio centering. Shot and goal. Chamberlain denied by Kyoto. Now another chance. Herneisen checked up by Cook. Here's Herneisen in the corner. Fada has his man covered. Cook, Fada, Walsh. Walsh trying to dig it loose. Now it comes loose by Lucas there to scoop it up. And the Czech rookie will send it out to center. Hardly fair to call these guys rookies anymore, John. We're into the playoffs. Most of them have gained a ton of experience in their first OHL year. Well, I know, Tim, and sometimes it's been said that I've got a knack of the obvious, but you can really see fatigue setting in for these, these players here. The opportunities are coming, but they just can't stretch out. They just can't take that extra stride. They just can't, can't get whatever it takes to finish the play. And we've seen a number of broken plays and big rebounds by both Kyoto and McDonald. Just players just can't get to them. They're tired out there. Well, we saw the majors with some chances early. Plunkett, Brooklyn, Walsh putting on some pressure and Pete's responding in that last sequence. 14-42 to go in the OT. Stahl will step in against Brent. Again, the two underage rookies, the two first round picks. Stahl wins the draw. Back for Foster to point ahead for Stahl. Brent moves to him. Now back of the net, scramble forward. Marcel Rodman looking for Foster. Goff had a stick on it. Here comes Mike Goff down the right wing. Cuts it to center for Ellis. Sets up the screen. McDonald will say, Ellis the rebound. Takes it back. Bobby it's Lee over! Scores. Matias! The Majors! The Majors! will venture into the Wolf Den tomorrow night in Sudbury. The Majors win in overtime. Matty Ellis from Willen, Ontario, the hero. Hey, very fitting for a guy like Matty Ellis who's given us all from day one to put that overtime goal in to give the Majors this boost up into the second series. You know, we're looking at a very fatigued and frustrated Peterborough Peach team and they gave it everything. You gotta give that team credit. They fought. They fought back from a 3-1 deficit, a 3 nothing deficit in one game, elimination many times. We look at Matty Ellis there, the hustle in this fellow. You know he's tired. He just keeps going. Mike Guff, terrific job throwing, if you want to call it Tim, a pick to keep that net open. Joy McDonald can't come across. Just a great effort on Matt Ellis' part. Foster couldn't have played it better. He's taking him wide. He gets the shot. Shot goes wide. Ellis picks up the rebound. Calm, cool, collective as a better he is. Unfortunately for, I think it's Rodman. Just is able to see that first hand. It goes off his stick a little bit. 5.36, the time of the series winning goal by three-year veteran Matty Ellis from Welland, Ontario. His second goal in the OHL playoffs. Joey McDonald, a heroic effort to come across and try and deny Ellis. And fitting that the player voted the major's hardest working player the last two seasons, a good bet for a third straight honor, scores the biggest goal in the modern major's franchise history. Hey, well, tell all the teachers at St. Mike's, the Majors won't be in class tomorrow. They're going to Sudbury. Yes, the Majors will board the bus to Sudbury. They will be running with the Wolfpack. The Sudbury Wolves, the Burt Tebble and coach team, beat the Majors five out of six games this year. Two of those games are played here at St. Mike's Arena. Majors, if they have any edge in that series, split the two games here. Even the game they lost was quite winnable. They're 0 for 3 in Sudbury. Sudbury had a distinct home ice advantage, and Sudbury was the dominant team in the one game of the Air Canada Center. But the Majors played them tight here. That might give them somewhat of an edge. Sudbury will be favored. They took Barry out in five games, but it is playoff hockey, and this was a huge win for the Majors, beating this very 
competitive Peterborough Peach team. And you know, Tim, it's a tough loss for the Peterborough Peach. This is the fourth year, consecutive year they've gone down to the first round of the playoffs after such a great effort they put in here to come back. But that's, unfortunately, that's the nature of hockey, especially playoff hockey. Andy Kyoto posting his first playoff victory. He came up big many times, especially on Krychek. He just robbed the blind, as we said at the time. Maybe this is the turning point of the game. Dave Cameron and Rick Elaine shaking hands. Jeff Tui, the general manager of the Peach, shaking hands with Dave Cameron. We saw Steve Smith, former Peterborough Peach, assistant coach to Rick Elaine. And there is Lindsey Plunkett. Prior to this game, the only major that had tasted playoff series victory. Now, well, they're literally going to have the time it takes to have a shower to savor this victory because they're on to the next one. And Belleville will play Ottawa in the second round. It'll be St. Mike's and Sudbury. We're going to take a break. We'll be back with post game. As St. Mike's Majors win it in overtime, 3-2. Matt Ellis at 536. The St. Michael's Majors have won the first playoff series in this franchise as well since they returned to the OHL, but in more than 40 years in dramatic fashion, Matty Ellis with the game-winning goal in overtime, and the Majors win this series three games to do. What a remarkable series it was, and we are going to have. Is that Matt Ellis coming in right now? Come on over. It's live TV. It's overtime. It's a win, of course, in the St. Michael's Majors are there. Congratulations. Matt Ellis does join us in studio. Matt, congratulations. My goodness, what a goal and what a win for this franchise tonight. Yeah, definitely. Uh, it's pretty exciting for all of us. We, uh, we've uh, had our ups and downs over the years, and I mean, to battle seven games hard like this and uh, win it in overtime, it's a credit to us because uh, we really worked hard this year. Now you go down and you set up that goal, of course, and you go around on the wraparound. The puck goes off the Peter Peterborough skate. It goes into the net. Tell us what's going through your mind. Uh, basically, uh, it was off a rebound. Take a look here, man. Uh, I just come around the net basically and uh, I know from a bit of experience that if uh, you put the puck uh, anywhere near the net, uh, good things uh, seem to happen and uh, that's a, it's a perfect example of that. And of course there it is again in the rebuild play, you go around, you see McDonald go down and of course a little bit of fortune off the Peterborough sk uh, stick, but you're absolutely right, you get it towards the net and there it was. And then the celebration begins. What happened in this series to cause a Game 7, Matt? You guys appeared to be in control, but you had to come back in dramatic fashion. What happened? Uh, we definitely had to come back. I mean, uh, we got up in the series there. We are leading 3-1, and I mean, it's uh, playoff hockey. Um, it's our first taste of the playoffs, and uh, we knew Peter Peterborough was going to play us tough, and I mean, uh, that's a credit to them as well. They, uh, they played a good series, but I mean, that's playoff hockey. That, things like that can happen, but now we've uh, taken that, and we've learned from it, and uh, are looking ahead to Sudbury. Looking ahead to Sudbury, not much time to look ahead because you're going to Sudbury tomorrow morning for game one of that series. That's got to be a challenge. I know you want to celebrate this tonight, but not much time. you got to turn around Sudbury tomorrow night. Uh, it's a bit of a challenge for us, but we'll all go home, get a good meal in us, and uh, uh, get a good rest and get focused for tomorrow. That's all we can do right now. we got to uh, enjoy this for the rest of, for the rest of tonight, and then uh, tomorrow we start something totally new. So, Well, Matt, we appreciate you coming out of the dressing room and doing this, but how about breaking a smile for us? You just scored the series winning goal. Thanks, Roger. <laughs> That's Matt Ellis scores the game-winning and series-winning goal. The St. Michael's Majors move on to the next round of the playoffs tomorrow night in Sudbury, Sunday afternoon here at St. Michael's College School Arena. Go back in and celebrate, Matt. Congratulations. Back upstairs now, here's Tim Haffey and John Walsh. Thank you, Roger. This should be a lot of fun. The Sudbury Wolves, Burt Templeton, always an interesting character down the playoff trail. Sudbury Wolves, a stacked team. They put a big winning uh, streak uh, together late in the season. We'll see Fedor Fedorov, Sergei's younger brother. We'll see Kip Brennan return from the LA Kings. We'll see uh, Mark Popovic's two world junior teammates, Jaspers and McKenzie. It's a good team. Seminov in the defense. A lot of top players on Burt Templeton's Wolves. Well, we will see a lot of them. And, you know, I hate to tell Steve Farkas, and yeah, you're going to see Kip Brennan again. But uh, yeah, it's a good point by Roger. Matt, smile a bit. You just scored the winning goal in overtime. You've made history. You can loosen up. And the Peterborough Peets certainly distinguish themselves, and we'd like to take this opportunity to uh, 
Recognize the great OHL careers of the captain of the Peets, Matt Kirkner had. Kirkner. He just played his final game. John Brio and, of course, Joey McDonald. Absolutely outstanding in goal. Yes, you really have to recognize them. And I know they're down and it's unfortunate, but, hey, they played a great series. You know, everybody had them down and out at 3-1 to one and 3 nothing in the building here in the four, uh, sorry, the fifth game. But, hey, they came back. They fought back. You've got to get them all the credit in the world. They're fighters. They're gritty. And Curtis Foster, another one who may have played his last OHL game if he signs with Calgary next year. And, John, this is indeed a historic moment in this St. Michael's Majors franchise in his fourth year. You and I have been following this team since the beginning. I think we should mention some of the other hockey men that, that helped build this team, that drafted many of these players we saw here tonight and got the team this far to round two of the OHL playoffs. I'm going to mention a few names. You can toss in some others, most notably Mark Napier, Mike Fuda, Mark Osborne. They're the three others. Timmy Armstrong, Ken Southwick, Rod Sealing was heavily involved with this team in the first year. Oh, exactly. And, and one of the driving forces behind a lot of these people were, were Reg, was Reg Quinn. And, you know, I know as I t talked about the uh, leading into Matty Ellis, you know, as soon as Matty Ellis was drafted, he came up to me and said, hey, he is one tough guy. In fact, he's probably a better ho a football player than he is a hockey player. But we're going to see what happens with Matt. And, and sure enough, you know, Matt Ellis rises to be the hero. We're looking at the play here. What do we see about Matt Ellis? Just tenacity, determination, grit. Call it whatever you want. He's not going to quit. You know, Kurt Foster there shoots it between his legs. He can go wide, just take your little dance around the corner. But he doesn't. He just attacks the net. He knows what's at stake. Picks up the puck. Obviously, he's a thinking man. You know, he's going to take a shot at, at, as soon as he gets the puck, he might hit Joey McDonald. What he's going to do is bring it around, bring it around. He's not letting the emotion of the moment take hold of him and just letting go of a quick shot. Kurt Foster's got to play pretty well here. As, we, as I said here, here, he can just take a shot at uh, McDonald, see what happens. Has his composure, brings it around, uses Rodman as a bit of a, a help there, and next thing you know, we're going to Sudbury. Now both the Peets and the Majors working very hard to take this to Game 7 overtime. And I should mention Mike Sellen and Ryan Robert. They were scratches for this entire series. We may see them in Round 2, but certainly both big parts of this St. Michael's Majors hockey team. 3-2 the final score. Matt Ellis with the overtime winner. Let's go back to Roger. Well, thanks very much, Tim and John, and certainly we have to say some kudos to the Peterborough Peets. It is very, very difficult, of course, when a series ends in overtime, and it's so exciting for the winning team. But let's remember the Peterborough Peets, last Sunday afternoon here in this arena, were down 3 nothing in the second period, down the series 3-1, to and could have very easily thrown in the towel. They did not. They came back to win that game 6-4. to They came back to win at home 4-1 to to force this seventh game. And then tonight played a terrific hockey game, played the majors dead even, and an unfortunate bounce gives Matt, or fortunate bounce for the majors, but unfortunate for the Peets, gives the majors a series. But what a terrific effort for the Peets. They deserve heartiest congratulations for their performance. The max scoring summary for overtime. Oh, that's sweet if you're a majors fan. One goal, Matt Ellis, 536. Michael Guff on the assist, and that one will go down in the history books as the majors' first overtime playoff series winning goal in more than 40 years. And congratulations to Matt Ellis, and terrific of him to join us here in studio. Our Molson Canadian three stars for this great playoff game tonight. Star number one, well, no surprise, it's Matt Ellis with the game-winning goal. Star number two, Ryan Walsh had an outstanding game for the majors. And star number three, Andy Kyoto. let's give him credit. He came in, in uh, under very tough circumstances, replacing Peter Budai after Budai won three games in a row in the series and lost game five. Dave Cameron brought him back for game six. Andy lost, and that is Andy's first victory of this series. And what a sweet one it is, a 3-2 overtime victory. Well, Rogers Television, OHL Primetime, Toronto Editions. We've got more hockey to bring you. Game two in this series, Sunday, April 8th, live at 1.30 p.m. for our Toronto viewers. It's the Sudbury Wolves and the St. Michael's Majors in the next round of the playoffs. But the Majors have a challenge ahead of them before that. They're getting on the bus tomorrow morning to play in Sudbury. Game one, incredibly, tomorrow night at 7.30 in Sudbury. Game two here at St. Michael's College School Arena, as I said. Rogers Television will have that one for you. Sunday, April the 8th at 1.30. Game three, Tuesday, April the 10th at 7.30 in Sudbury. And game four, and we'll have that one for you on Rogers as well, Thursday, April the 12th at 7.30 p.m. here at St. Michael's College School Arena. So the majors live to fight another day. The gallant Peets go down for the fourth straight time in the first round of the series. But what a series they played as they lose 3-2 in overtime. 
Jeffrey Tam is our director. Don Jackson is the executive producer. Tim Haffey and John Walsh, of course, doing the play-by-play. -play. I'm Roger Lajoie. Delighted to be with you, and we'll continue our covering the majors. Our next game, don't forget, Sunday, April 8th, live at 1.30, game two of the second round of the OHL playoffs, the Sudbury Wolves and the St. Michael's Majors. Once again, the final score in this thrilling seven-game series, the Majors 3, the Sudbury Wolves 2. I'm Roger Lajoie. Good night from St. Michael's College School Arena.